This is not some soul's factory. This is long, quiet days with the Father. This is obedience. This is cold, early mornings, tired, rough hands, and hot summer days. This is quality before quantity. This is where you're not just a customer, you're a client. I don't just work for you, but with you. This is where your ideas come to life. I am Joshua Watts. I love what I do and that I'm able to use my skills to serve our Father and you. I look forward to working with you. This is Joshua Watts Leather. If this is true, then our country is in a lot of trouble. We would have these trips, special trips. But he said, my, my daddy takes the bodies to the grocery store and he grinds them up and puts it in the hamburger. And nobody ever knows it. How can kids, six, eight, ten years old, be describing rituals that come from a book like the like the book of the dead it's hard to get your mind around people being capable of this kind of evil this is Dan Badandi of TruthRadioShow.com. I am honored to offer my listeners a one-month free subscription to NYSTV.org. Subscribers will have access to thousands of nice TV videos from spiritual warfare to biblical and occultic topics, banned from YouTube videos, and much more. Subscribe today on NYSTV.org and use the promo code DANTHEMAN and receive your first month free.
welcome everybody to Spiritual Warfare Wednesday with our hosts Dan Bedondi and Brian Reese. What's up, Brian? What's going on, brother? Not much, Dan. Ready for this? Ready for the show today? I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. So, so Brian was just writing another song, uh, my little teacup song. You know? <laughs> re, re, <laughs> rewriting the words of it. Yeah. Yeah. So today's uh, broadcast is there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. So uh, we're, it's like a continuation from Friday. And I want to apologize about Friday, guys. I was burnt out. I mean, I didn't get no sleep, whatever the case. But Brian, uh, he held the show together, man. Thank you, Brian, for that. And uh, so we're going to continue on. We're going to get more into um, basically what ancient texts have to say. We're going to touch on the Bible again. A little bit of the information is going to sound redundant uh, if you watch the show Friday. But we have to uh, do this because we're going to show you all the ancient texts say. Because our goal here, too, is uh, also pr not just to prove the giants, but also just to uh, obliterate, okay, smash the Setai theory to pieces, which we've done many times already. But this information here, and it, it's cool how all the ancient cultures, all the ancient texts, I'm sorry, they all match, any the ancient cultures, too, they all match the same stories, you know what I mean? And you can't get around it, you know what I mean? So before we get going, I want to thank uh, ShakeAwakeRadio.com for carrying the show on that awesome, amazing network. And uh, also, by the way, guys, Annie from ShakeAwakeRadio.com wants to thank every, every one of you guys because last Wednesday we did all proceeds for the donations, which we got in the chat room, guys. Um, helps support our ministry. It's uh, a link to our uh, fundraiser. So it helps go into that operation you see here in the ministry and all that stuff. But um, we donated 50% of the proceeds last Wednesday to for Shake and Wake Radio, and it was just enough to keep her on the air. Yeah, that's a, that's a blessing. Uh, so I want to thank her and uh, shakeawakeradio.com and beforeitsnews.com for carrying the show. And our uh, sponsor for tonight's show is brought to you by wattsleather.com. So please check them out. Anything, like literally anything leather you want, custom made, whatever color, whatever, whatever you want on it, period. You know what I mean? Custom leather made uh, becomes a reality, plain and simple. So before we begin, begin, I want to start off with this meme here. The Nephilim, biblical giants. So the new giants also known as the Nephilim, are described as angelic hybrids that are a result of procreation of human females and fallen angels. And they are described in the Book of Enoch as race of giants who did great acts of evil, existing before and after a global flood. These giants are also found in many ancient cultures through writings, sculptures, and paintings, bones, and remains have been found worldwide. However, they are kept hidden from the public eye and are taken to an elite bunkers or, or secluded Smithsonian facilities. So that's 100% true. And we showed that, some of that last week. So uh, anyway, we got a, um, a lot of... <laughs> wow, we got a lot to cover here. Uh, a lot of context here. I hope we can get through it all. And we want to talk about the Kandahar giant too. Uh, a little bit about that. Brian's got a boatload of information on that, so we're gonna uh, do that. But first, we want to start. You know, we talked about last week. There, you know, all these newspaper articles. We're gonna do another giant show probably next month or something called Giants in the News, and we're gonna just show you just news articles. Oh, after news articles, thousands of them. We showed you a couple last week, whatever. But um, we're gonna do that then. And so, uh, Brian, uh, do you wanna before we get going to this information? Do you wanna talk about anything? Um, just that slide you had up a minute ago about you know secluding stuff and information by the Smithsonian and all that. What's interesting, what I keep finding out, and even when I went and done some traveling and off and on, and asked questions around local areas and whatnot, and whatever state I'm in or whatever, in the past, there's literally like I mentioned on the show Friday, there's big pockets people not not necessarily the Smithsonian. There's there's men and women out there that have huge amounts of money. That they when they find out these archaeology standpoint on this stuff, and it usually involves a giant femur or giant bones of some shape or form, elongated skull, they come and snatch it up. Not only top of that, the Smithsonian, they're going, you know, you got these rich people, mm. and then you got the Smithsonian people going back and forth trying to extract all this data. Well, Dan, I think it has something to do with either 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 trying to keep up with all of it. They don't want well, obviously they don't want the public to see it. But the point is, there's witnesses to this stuff because, mm. I mean, heck, we got newspaper articles, right? Yep. And they cover it up. You know, we can go on this big tangent about, you know, how they do it or whoever or whatever, threat tactics or whatever the form, shape or form it is, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, they don't put so much emphasis on finding human remains. You know, like, I get it. They do respect it in some shape or form if they find a hidden grave or something like that. But usually the public will be able to see it or whatever. They just swoop this under the rug and take off, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously there's a significance. And then we're going to get into the uh, Navajo Indians, Hopi Indians, all this mm -hmm. stuff. We're going to talk about that during the broadcast. So 
they, you know, the Indian tribes, they know of this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But then like, uh, you know, just the regular American people were in the dark. We're left in the dark. And I think there's something, there's a big plan, sinister plan with that, you know, that we could literally put those pieces together, go down to all kinds of different rabbit holes. I mean, all of it interconnects, like you said the last time on a couple of shows back, you know, we can get into Project Philadelphia, all these different projects that the military and all these different applications they used throughout the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. They all inter it all integrates with all these different, you know, angelic beings or whatever it is, deities, whatever, dogmen, all these different characters, and also the giants. But I just want to chime in and throw that out there. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Jackie in the chat room, Jackie J, she said they don't want us to know real history. And you're 100% right. Uh, you know, they don't want us to know uh, real history. And so uh, we got, um, I wanted to show you this here where we talk about the news real quick. On a Trail of the Nephilim 2, this is a book by Ellie Mazzulli. And if you don't know L.A., he's very popular with this stuff. He's also been on the History Channel many times over. And uh, he's one of the leading people on, to uncover these giants and everything. And there's some of the newspaper articles. I stole this from uh, John Hall's cutting <laughs> edge. Yeah. Uh, the graphic he put together about all the stuff that's in the news and the media and all that, and they cover, uncover that. I mean, giant skulls and everything else. And uh, yeah, this is uh, this was in uh, Texas here, South Texas. These massive skulls, and they're skulls of giant cavemen. Many of in of these caves, at a depth of more than three feet, he found uh, remains of several giant human skeletons, including almost a perfect skull with uh, different from many particular modern species. And yeah, they were almost ten feet tall. These skeletons. And no, it's not a bone until this is full skeletons, guys. And uh, another book here too. We just talked about it last week too. Giants on record. They do the same thing. They have actually charts of uh, all the you know stuff in the news. Uh, yeah, giants r ranging from uh, six feet, which is uh, back then was tall too, about uh, all the way up to eighteen feet of remains they found. You know what I mean? And uh, some cases thirty six feet too. Thirty six, not thirty six and thirty six feet. <laughs> That's yeah. big. And, That's uh, really big. You know, we're going to get into that too. Brook and all that says uh, the book Brook and all that, where they, you know, people were like grasshoppers in the presence of these giants, you know? And uh, so, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we've got uh, this here. This is Madam HP. Uh, it's Ellen, you know, Elaine, I'm sorry, but <laughs> Petrova Bolowski, whatever. She's HP uh, Bolowski. I keep butchering her name. But anyway, she talked about this in a book, Raised from the Rose Cross. Now, this girl, I don't recommend you reading this book. This is a book out of the demonic pits of hell. Uh, this girl was uh, beyond sick and disgusting. But even in the cult world, they acknowledge this stuff. So the following mm -hmm. account was listed uh, the Rosicrucian publication, Raised from the Rose Cross, a magazine of mystical light. The reference is also paired to Mystic Madame Pawlowski. Blavowski, I'm sorry, book of the Isis Unveiled, and she's the founder of the Theosophy Movement, and she, yes, Hitler, Adolf Hitler also, and Aleister Crowley loved this woman. So that says a lot about her, you know. And it says um, the movement, once again, giants and Atlantis are prominent themes in the belief system. So they, she talks about giants, and, uh, yeah, they talk about or discovered a skeleton two weeks ago. Uh, made a report of, uh, I'm trying to read this to here, society accompanying the means of two skeletons that were very large, and in fact, compared to the ordinary size skeleton, they, they like dominant, basically. I'm, I'm sorry, guys, it's hard to read that on the screen here. It's like white. But yeah, just wanted to go over that stuff. So let's go over some uh, scriptures and, uh, yeah, because we've got a lot to quick, cover. Dan. Yeah, Real quick, Dan, ask me or Jack, too. Um, yeah. The occult know about this, right? Yeah. But on a, if you... Because they're scared. Like, they bringing this up, you get into witchcraft and all this stuff. They was trying to do things to suppress and try to get these things from not jumping in. It, seriously, they was trying to shut off things, open things, communicate. We we all know that. Well, I say majority of the people in the chat room know it, but they was trying to, mm. they know there was a spiritual problem there. Yep. And that's why she's mentioning that book. It's, it's mm. just crazy. And then another thing I want to emphasize too, um, Dan, you said about six feet tall. There is, okay, for example, there is some giants on record six, seven feet tall. And they'll be like, and people are like, well, so what? I'm 5'11". You know, so what? I'm 6'4". It's the point of the, the like, the width, hmm. the mass of it. Like, when the head can go over a 6'2 person, literally flesh and all, the the width of the person. Even though they was six to seven feet tall and then they got up to weight, they was abnormally wide yeah. frame is the head was gigantic so there's all kinds of even even when we get into the giants there's 
you know, odd shaped giants all throughout history. Yeah. But yeah, the but the majority of them they get up to like Dan's talking here, very tall. Hundreds but you got to look at the size. Like yeah. Yeah. If we can, yeah, me and you can get like and for example, have a basically a full giant head, and me and you both can fit in it. There's mm -hmm. a problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just letting you know. So. Yeah, it made a little bit of this out. It says the lower jaw skeleton is a state of preservation and double-sized jaw of a civilized person and a thigh bone when compared to an ordinary modern skeleton looks like a horse, the size of a horse, that of a horse. So that's what yeah. that was saying. Now, the book of Joshua, we're going to cover, you know, we're going to go in and out of these books here. Uh, this, we're going to go through the slides first. And uh, the book of Joshua, chapter 4, verse 8 says, and it judges the rulers of the daughters of men and took their wives to be forced from their husbands according to their choice. And the sons of men uh, in those days took from the cattle of the earth and beasts of the field and the fowls of the air and tore mixture of animals and you know, cloning and you know whatever the case, you know what I mean? Uh, of animals and one species with another, so they were merging genetic species together. That's why it was like half man, half dog or whatever, you know what I mean? Crazy stuff like that. This stuff existed. So I'm just pointing this out real quick. In order to provoke the Lord to anger, and that was their goal to do that. And uh, the whole earth was corrupt. And all flesh was corrupt in the earth. And all men and animals were corrupt in some of the plants. That's why God had to destroy the world. Because of the stuff. You know what I mean? And uh, So the book of Jubilees, chapter 7. Um, for all, And that, this year was just to point out that genetic corruption. You know what I mean? They, you know, that's why the flood that took place. But anyway, the book of Jubilees, uh, chapter 7, uh, verses uh, 21 and 25. Uh, for owning the three things that came of the flood upon the earth, namely Onan, uh, I mean, Owen, I'm sorry, the fornication wherein the watches, which is the fallen angels, against the law of the ordinances went in Horan. See, this, by the way, law of their ordinances, law and ordinances are two different things. That's for the, you know, commandments and whatnot. We'll get to that some other time. But anyway, went Horan after the daughters of men and took themselves wives which they chose and made uh, the beginning of uncleansedness and they uh, begot sons called Nephilim and they were unlike, uh, and uh, they devoured one another, and the giants slew the Nephilim and uh, the people there. So, yeah, what you're seeing here is like the fallen angels took the daughters of men and had sex with them and had children. You know what I mean? And <laughs> and these things were nasty too. And they, they were the iniquity was to shed blood, and the earth was full of iniquity. And after these, they sinned against the beasts of the birds. So this is what they're saying right here. This matches what Joshua says. You know what I mean? After this, they sinned against the beasts and the birds and all that moved and walked on the earth. And so they had sex with anything that walked, literally. You know what I mean? And they did all kinds of genetic experiments and all, all that stuff. And that's why you had all these... <laughs> uh, what are those uh, senators, I think they're called? Half man, half horse? Uh, yeah. Uh, I always butcher it myself. Uh, <laughs> I always say, uh, like, satar or yeah. sat... Or like a... Yeah. Yeah, things say, like that. You could, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, sirens and stuff like yeah. that. Sirens oh, yeah. could be associated. Yeah, there's some weird stuff. Mermaids, etc. But yep. yeah, that's how that satars, stuff came. satars, yeah, some crazy stuff. Yeah, fairies, all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that's how they came to exist. And uh, you know, it's not out of somebody's imagination. This stuff was real, you know. And it's another thing here. Yeah, you talk about the what the children, the watches, uh, giants, and they were like 13 to 36 feet tall in some cases. Man, that's crazy, man. <laughs> That's huge, and like there's a big one, like you said, the very wide and stubbly. Yeah, That's what uh, yeah. Goliath was too, right? It's like yeah, it makes me think of um, what was that? What was that game? Uh, Warcraft. Yeah, you know the Warcraft. Like it reminds me of the you know the Warcraft characters. There was a movie out that came out with that. What 2016? They had yeah. the red and blue symbolism kind of narrative on the I think the the picture of the movie or whatever. Um, yeah. And it was the same. There's all kinds of stuff in it. And um, they look like, you know, like trolls, but they're gigantic, you know, in yeah. width. But they are like eight feet tall, you know. And they would open up portals and literally <laughs> come into the realm of the humans. <laughs> it's like, what are we doing? It's the same. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be weird. I mean, I mentioned that in the last, last week's broadcast. Go check that out on Friday, Spiritual Warfare Friday, about the 411 missing people. Is it too much to ask if that's <laughs> something that might be going on? Yeah. You know, I'm just I'm just throwing it out there, guys. Yeah. Oh, the centaurs, uh, Jackie told us in the chat room. Thank you, Jackie. Oh, the centaurs. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. So but there is especially um 
the horse like men that like the, the you know the Narnia, mm-hmm. the Chronicles of Narnia is ate up with it. Mm-hmm. That's like one big biblical. They it's just a big mess. I wouldn't recommend watching it again, but there's all kinds of creatures. It's like watching Lord of the Rings. It's the yeah. same thing. They're literally showing you stuff, you know, like that's happened or is happening. <laughs> so. You're right. Yeah, that's crazy. And yeah, and like, um, you know, we'll go to the scripture here real quick. And if you watch the show uh, last Friday, a couple of these things, will, you know, we're going to repeat some of the same stuff. But yeah, we have to do this to show a point here. So uh, if we go to Genesis 6, you know, the most trusted thing is the Bible, right? So Genesis 6, right? And it says, It came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. And the sons of God, which were not the sons of Seth, these were the sons of uh, God, the fallen angels, saw the daughters of men that they were fair, which was beautiful, and they took them as wives which they chose. Right? You're going to hear this a lot, uh, by the way. I'm just showing you different sources for the same stuff. And said, uh, and the Lord said, my spirit will not always drive with men, and that ne- days will be limited to 120 years. So, And there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. And the, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, that's sexual copulation, and they brought children unto them, and they the same became mighty men, which were men of old and men of renown. And, mm-hmm. you know, of course, God saw the wickedness of the earth, and they, that's why he had to destroy it, you know what I mean? One of many reasons, you know what I mean? Then we move on to Jubilees, okay, the book of Jubilees again. And um, this is the same account. You know, I mean, these are non-biblical books, but these are ancient texts. In Jubilees chapter 5, it says, And it came to pass... When children of men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, and the angels of God saw them, the angels, angels of God, saw them, which is the fallen ones, saw them of certain year on this jubilee that they were beautiful to look upon, and they took themselves wives of whom they chose, and they bore them sons, sons, and they were giants. And the lawlessness increased on the earth, and all flesh was corrupted its way. And it also talks about, again, when you, I just brought this up, about the cattle and the birds and everything were all corrupted genetically, too. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if you go to Enoch chapter 6, same thing, <laughs> verbatim. And it, this is why I question the things, because people say, well, these were in the Bible, and we could go down that route if they're right, biblical endorsed books or not, whatever the case. But the point is, these ancient scriptures ver- verbatim match in Genesis 6. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it, this here, and it came to pass when m- children... Of men multiplied in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters, and angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them, and they said to one another, Come, let us choose wives among the children of men, and begot us children. And Sam Jiza, who is a leader, which we think is probably Satan, uh, said unto them, I fear ye not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall not have to pay the penalty of the great sin. Because a lot of people ask, and we could get into that too, uh, real quick. Uh, why doesn't God forgive the fallen angels? Because you're seeing what they're doing, right? They swore a great deed, okay? They, they actually took an oath to do this, right? And to have children with them. And they knew what they were doing. They knew the penalties they're going to pay, and they did it anyway, you know what I mean? That's why God's not going to forgive them, you know what I mean? And look, and he said, let us swear an oath and uh, bind ourselves upon mutual implications and not to abandon this plan but to do this thing. Now, this here, and um, I'm sure uh, you agree to... Uh, Brian, this here was to, which were you know in the God of Eden when they talked about you know the coming of Jesus, the Messiah, and the Antichrist, right? And which you know, was in the future at that time, you know. And uh, I believe, and I, I I really believe that the fallen angels came here to do this to corrupt the genetic bloodline of the bloodline of Adam and Seth to stop uh, that perfect seed from being born in the future, which would be Mary, right? To host God manifested in the flesh, you know what I mean? And uh, and they knew if they would have cut off that bloodline, Jesus could never come. Well, the God, I think I would have found a way, another way to do it, but um, that was their plan. You know, what I mean, I think that's one of the main reasons why. And plus, they hated God's creation in the first place. They were jealous of man. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean. So, what do you think on that, Brian? Yeah, I mean, another thing too. Um, I just want to throw us out of here. Mm-hmm. I've took this to people, and I don't want to bash anybody. I really, I'm, I'm gonna come off. I don't want to come off as being arrogant or anything. I'm, I'm literally just. I've talked to people about it that are in higher authority, so-called mm-hmm. higher authority, and explained my. Well, I'm just biblical, not really trying to argue. Just literally saying, "Hey, giants, <laughs> dollars of men. You know, like angels, like fallen angels taking the dollars of men and having children. 
I try to talk about that, and it's like, okay. And then they say it's the sons of Seth, and then they get on that dispensational ideology. And I've always said, okay, so how come we didn't have giant, you know, babies then, or giant, you know, giants come out? How come our children are just regular size? And then you get into the, they get into their theology, like their theory. They're so just messed up what they've been hearing. And it's, this has been a slow drip of, indoctrination so get back to your question real quick i just want to chime in and say it real quick yeah. get back to your indoctrination i believe yes the seed it's a seed battle so he's literally trying to keep from the almighty coming through mary 100 percent, i agree with you dan and they was manipulating the gene pool all the way through the whole and then what well, and it you know it's so on it honestly what i think about it all is like not only you know, all the, all the animals in the garden, they had to defile. That's why you got minotaurs, all kinds of creatures, lion like men of Moab, lion like, you know, lion like men, creatures, all this stuff. They had to go after God's pe peaceful animals that was in the garden before the mm -hmm. fall, you know, and, you know, the bugs, everything, like defiling them in some shape or form to turn them into hybrid humanoid creatures. And it's phenomenal to me, but mm -hmm. um, praise God that, the intervention happened and we had our almighty Messiah coming through um, into the matrix is what the mother's womb is. And it was able to go, go up to Calvary and die for us. I mean, praise God and all the miracles and our, and just, it's just amazing. It's amazing. Really. No, it when is. you think about it, what Jesus did for us. Mm -hmm. And, but when you think about this giant narrative and really get down to it, it's just pretty simple. I'm not trying to be mean. People think too, we think too humanly. Like we think, okay, how can this be possible? Like that the angels came and took the daughters of men and bore giants. Well, that's what the Bible says. And then we have history, his, historical proof that we have history. But people are like, no, it's the sons of Seth. And I'm thinking, well, and then I asked the people that's supposedly in higher authority. Well, how do you come to this conclusion? And no joke, Dan, they'll say it's because they was evil. Well, so you mean the women was so evil that they got altered, <laughs> like their babies got altered and they become 20 footers. And they would little. I've had this conversation with wow. people. They would argue with me and say, yeah, the sons of Seth, you wasn't supposed to mingle with the sons of Seth. It was a curse. It was a, they was demonic. They was evil. And it's like, but hang on a minute. What about Genesis six? <laughs> you know? So oh, it's yeah, crazy. Dan. Yeah. It's Danny, cr oh yeah. They try to say, I, I watched some of these people. They said, "Oh, the, the what they talk about the sons of God were actually the sons of Seth." No, these were the, the fallen angels. You know what I mean? And we, I mean, I, I forgot to even bring Greek mythology into this. The Greek mythology said they women had sex with the gods. They because they thought the Absolutely. fallen angels were with the gods, and they bought yeah. these demigods. You know what I mean? And uh, you, no matter how you slice it or dice it, you are. Yeah. You know I mean, these type people are not going to win this. You know what I mean? Like you can't not. You, you're denying history. You're calling the Bible a liar. Okay, plain and simple. Yeah. And these the same people say the Christians. You know what I mean? Like, what what goes through your mind? Yeah, you know, it really ticks me off with the stuff I tell you. And uh, it's just, and the thing is because they they got this limited mind, this limited conscious that they can't understand anything like that. And uh, so they put this box over the head, and they you know what I mean? It's it's so mm, I tell you, it makes you grind your teeth. It really does. You know what I mean? And even the book of Baruch three twenty says uh, there were giants famous for beginning. And they were a great stature and expert in war. And it talks a lot about the giants. It's these ancient texts, okay? Plain and simple. You know what I mean? And uh, you got um, Enoch here, and again, say, talking about uh, the giants, uh, like they were, the details, the fallen angels, what they did, and everything else. And also the woman they became pregnant, be a great giants whose height was 3,000 L's, who consumed acquisitions of men and they could no longer sustain them. And the giants turned against and devoured mankind. You know what I mean? And they sinned again. Once again, they say they sinned against birds, beasts, reptiles, and fish, and devour one another's flesh and drink blood, and earth laid acquisition against the lowest ones. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. You can't escape the fact that these giants were children of uh, the fallen angels. You know what I mean? Plain and simple. You know, it's like, and if you, and the thing is, like, after, like, looking at all this information, then you could go research it yourself. I mean, if you still think that they are uh, uh, sons of Seth, okay, you, you need some help. You really don't. You really need to learn the Bible. You need some help because, number one, you're calling the Bible a liar. You know what I mean? Because the Bible makes it very clear that these were sons of God, which is the fallen angels. 
You know what I mean? And uh, you know, it, it's sickening, it really is. <laughs> you know, I I mean, oh yeah, yeah. and then mm, oh, yeah. and then you're then you're um, mocking and saying that Adam and Eve was a giant stature. Yeah, like it, you're mocking it. It's like it, it's it. I don't know. There, there's just so much deception and and disease. I hate to use that word. I'm not going to use that word. But there's so much. It's just perversion. There's all this manipulation. It's all been split and tied and spit out and thrown up and and making all kinds of different uh, rabbit holes. And mm -hmm. what it hap what happens at the end of the day, you're getting away from God's word. Yeah. And it's it's just it's this man's interpretations of wickedness. But you know, like you said though, go back to Greek, go back to all these different cultures that was literally mm -hmm. saying, hey. What do we got going on here? We got, and then we're going to talk about that later too when we get done with other other things we'll, we'll later on the broadcast about Indian cultures. They knew this too, Dan. Yeah. They come on now. They was literally oh, yeah, seeing we'll physically giants stuff, come out. Yeah. yeah they were seeing the, seeing their babies and children and their mothers and their daughters get taken. Yeah. But no, no, it's all figurative. That don't matter. That's yeah. that's just something we don't want to talk about today. <laughs> it don't happen today. We got too much technology. No. Listen, the technology. Nothing new under the sun. The tech we have now is probably so primitive it's not even funny. The stuff in the way back in the Antediluvian days and before the flood, my goodness. And you can hear, you can go read about it uh, autonomous uh, vehicles and everything. There was all kinds of stuff that's being leaked out. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into that because it's not part of the show, but there's all kinds of stuff. And people just sit back and say, well, ah, that ain't nothing. But then it's just like, they just want to discredit everything, you know? It's sad. Yeah, I mean... Anyway. Uh Enoch uh, chapter 15 here, yeah, verse 8 says, and now the giants again, who's uh, produced from the spirits in flesh, so the fallen angels and the woman, shall be called evil spirits upon the earth. And uh, so now I want to talk about two real quick. This is where the origins of demons are from. So basically when mm -hmm. these giants were destroyed, they were cursed to, their spirits were cursed to roam the earth until judgment day. And that's what we call demons today. You know what I mean? So they man manifest in all sorts of things. You know what I mean? So... Uh, yeah, we got uh, unclean spirits, but that's a whole thing for another time, but I'm just trying to explain here. So, yeah, these were <laughs> spiritual beings, okay, which the fallen angels produce them with the woman on the earth and having children. That's how that came about. You know what I mean? It doesn't, the, the whole set like theory makes no sense. Number one, if you want to use science, scientifically impossible. Number two, it's unbiblical to even, re even remotely indicate that it, the set like theory. Unbiblical, and uh, it goes against the Bible and every ancient culture. Every ancient culture, hundreds of them, all say the same stuff. So let me guess, like the Sete, this Sete theory is kind of no, you know what I mean? And uh, so I guess all the ancient cultures and the Bible and everything, it's all wrong, right? But you people know better, right? Yeah, yeah. Good luck on that one. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's ri ridiculous, really is. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, and then the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, and do battle and work destruction on the earth and cause trouble. And they take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst and cause offenses. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the woman because they have proceeded from them. You know what I mean? And it, go, it gets into great detail later on about um, the giants spiritually. You know what I mean? And uh, mm. there's so much. And we got um, Gary Johnson's book here. Uh, the Genesis Six Conspiracy. Gary Wayne. Gary, 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 Gary Wayne. <laughs> Taking the president uh, candidate there. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it, man. Gary Johnson. He's a libertarian guy who ran for president several times. But <laughs> yeah, so uh, Gary Wayne, okay, his Genesis Six Conspiracy, man. Uh, he really nails this uh, home, really does the set like there, yeah. And we can get to the chapter here, pages one. Yeah, now chapter uh, three of his book, he says, let me get that interpreting that the sons of God, talking about the set like people, right? Uh, interpreting that the sons of God were descendants of the righteous line of Seth is plausible but incorrect. Yeah, and this conclusion is uh, superstition, not fact. And the Bible does not support this position whatsoever. So if the sons of God were not progeny of Seth, then who, then just who were they explaining figures? You know what I mean? And uh, so it is possible to establish with whom uh, Scripture refers to, but it doesn't require, um, uh, it requires a little investigation work. And to discover just who the sons of God were, I must first turn to Job chapter uh, 1, 
uh, where it's the terms one day angels in the terms that in Hebrew for uh, the sons of God. And you, you could do this search on that angels, sons of God, plain and simple, and in Hebrew. So came to present, present themselves before the Lord and the defining notion of identifying sons of God to be angels is an intonation of the bottom of the page in New International. And it goes on to, um, I'm sorry, guys, it's trying to hard to read with a light in my face. So, <laughs> yeah, so anyway, the, he goes on to say, yeah, basically the same stuff we said, all right, and then uh, bringing up some of the same verses we just did and just saying, yeah, it's, yeah, unbiblical to even remotely think that the Seth theory is even remotely correct, you know what I mean? And it's not, you know what I mean? Plain and simple. And uh, what else here? And uh, the, in uh, chapter 4, he says that Nephilim, known as Anakim, Anaka, were people who struck fear into the hearts of average man, and Carol Rose describes them as enormous and terrifying giants. And Nephilim were great warriors, and they were much taller and much larger than the average Israelite, and possessed considerably more strength, but does uh, giant refer to the larger race of humanoid and the uh, distinct beast of the dwarfed humankind? But post Israelites described themselves as mere grasshoppers compared to the, being next to the Nephilim, and known uh, variantly as Anakites. So Israelites uh, did not uh, just, I'm saying, they just said the Nephilim were bigger, and they were also, again, uh, the size, you know, they were the size of grasshoppers standing next to these things, you know what I mean? But once mm -hmm. again, another, and it goes into the book of Baruch 2 and uh, Job. You know what I mean, which goes into uh, Lu it talks about Lucifer too, but you know, indicate that Lucifer himself is uh, a nephilim himself. He was a giant. You know what I mean? Which, mm -hmm. by the way, Friday guys, um, we got to really destroy this whole thing. There's this. Uh, I'll, I'll be nice. I'll try to be nice, right? <laughs> um, people going around, okay, and some Bible scholars that try to say Jesus and uh, Lucifer are the same thing. Man, yeah, that made my blood boil. Because if you think that you. You better just go read the Bible and learn something because two different things, two different bloodlines, two different eras. You know what I mean? Not even close to even being that. And that's what these people don't tell you, you know? But, um, mm. Mm. yeah, man, it's, it's awesome. And, uh, you know, yeah. this, uh, I'm just going over here, book chapter seven. So, just going over the information. I wrote all the stuff down, but, man, uh, you, you'll see it everywhere. And, uh, that the Seth theory is complete. It's fa uh, it's fake, plain and simple. Fake as heck, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, I can't get any better than that. But yeah, there's no biblical context to support a set right there. You know what I mean? And uh, there were fallen angels that had sex with the woman, and plain and simple. And the Bible says it in detail. And you can't get any more explicit detail than coming into the doors of men and bearing children. I, you know what I mean? Like, you can't get any more explicit detail than that. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say after this. I don't, and if people still believe that, you got some screws loose, and I hate to say it that way. <laughs> yeah. So like Brian, yeah, Brian says it nicer than me. You know, Brian's much nicer than I am. But <laughs> <laughs> Diane. Well, now they getting on. To, we'll just re retract back here on the Lucifer and Jesus thing. Uh, goodness. Okay, so we're at the cusp of like some crazy stuff going on, right? Earthquake activity. We got earthquakes in diverse places mm -hmm. or all these different things, biblical stuff all around us and UFO phenomenon, all this stuff, UAPs, whatever you want to call it, all this stuff's going off. They keep changing the name next year is what's going to be, you know, whatever, a network TLC or something, mm -hmm. mock it or abbreviate it to whatever MTV, whatever it is. <laughs> They're going to just name it, whatever. <laughs> um, it's crazy. Uh, so, um, you know, it's time to get serious. Like Jesus is Lord, right? Yep. And to get real and write this stuff on our heart and read the Bible, have understanding. And because, you know, we, we just did a show a couple of weeks ago, like last two, you know, two, we've done it several times talking about Mount Sinai and then you mm -hmm. talk about what's going on, the different various things going on there. And, you know, it's kind of ironic, right, guys? Like, there's all this stuff going on, and now we have this huge earthquake activity. Literally right after the 18th when they got down with that COP27. I'm not trying to be, like, get into conspiracy, but it just seems like to me a lot of stuff starts cracking off. You know, for example, I know it's not part of the show. It's interesting. The U.S. will say it's meteorites coming out of the ground. I mean, excuse me, coming out of the sky. Meteorites, there's all this stuff being shown in the sky. 
But you go to Australia or some other news outlets, you know, in other countries, they're saying they're UFOs. So what is it? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, we're being all fronts being told opposite stuff. Like we're, t whatever it is, if they say it's a rock, you best know it's something else. <laughs> so like, it's just interesting. I couldn't believe it. He was like, oh yeah, that's literally a UFO. And it's interesting. And I'll say this again. Why is the seismic activity coming in over these lands and you can, it's like, it's over its surface hit. It's not deep. It's surface seismic activity. And I always, in my mind, you think about hypersonic, you know, you know, hypersonic speeds, you know, coming into such force. Is it too, Paul, is it too much to say, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, it's just, this, this is just my theory. Is it, is it too much to ask? Is there something going on there? Like these, these Orphana, these Aoife, the, the Vinama, these things that happened in the, in the past and no, in Noah's day, in Noah's day and before the flood, right? All this stuff, Dan, right? So is it too much to ask that this stuff might be, yes, earthquakes, or it could be something else. And it's just interesting that they'll be like, yeah, the, the rock is slowing down, you know, and talking about meteorites, et cetera, whatever. But it's just, there's just so much stuff being inundated. And it just seems to me since November the 6th, the 18th, and whatever kind of nefarious things they did, we did a show on the whole thing, talking about the locations. We talked about that Friday. And then we talked a little bit about the date. You know, we did the Mount Sinai one on Wednesday, I think that's when it was. And you got all this stuff. And this stuff can't just be coincidental, the timing. And uh, they talk about climate and all this other stuff. But anyways, I know that's not what the show is about tonight, but I just want to interject and type of, you know, talk about that for a few minutes. So oh, you're right, man. Now I wanted to also uh, read page uh, 101 of the Genesis 6 conspiracy. And it's pretty much exactly what we just said, too. Uh, so, and Gary here is saying, therefore, it's two classes of uh, fallen angels exist. The angels who are unpassioned and uh, still follow Satan as their leader, creating evil, and those who copulated with the women, the, you know, females, human females, those infamous fallen angels were not in, identical with demons. Uh, for demons are the offspring of the fallen angels and human females, and the demons are the immortal uh, spirits of giants whose bodies died, but uh, whose uh, legally procreated spirits roam the earth even to this day because they were forbidden to enter heaven or hell. Uh, they are causing evil into the day of judgment at the end of this age. And they're going to mm. be cast. They're not going to hell. They're going to be cast straight up into the lake of fire. That's what this says, too. Um, so, mm. and I want to explain real difference to, you know, people that what, what, because a lot of people don't know what heaven, I mean, sorry, um, hell and the lake of fire, the difference. They think it's the same thing. Hell is like a, a it's a temporary place. And hell itself is going to be thrown into the lake of fire, too. So, the hell, the hell is going to be like a walk in a pocket bed to the lake of fire. So, um, the fallen angels, Satan, and um, these Nephilim spirits, they don't go to hell. They're not in hell, okay? They go to the lake of fire after judgment, you know what I mean? And regardless of what you see on movies and all that, there's no potty going down in hell. There's no Satan ruling the place. That's not how it works, you know what I mean? Satan would not want to be in hell himself, you know what I mean? It's, it's not his house. So hell is not Satan's house, plain and simple. He himself would not want to be there. So mm -hmm. regardless of what you see on TV, because we all got this stuff drilled in. And you know it's funny, too? <laughs> <laughs> this guy was pouring salt on the floor, right? And uh, it was something on Facebook, right? And I seen everybody commenting, oh, demons can't get past salt. And I'm like, you people need to stop watching dumb shows like Supernatural and listen to these things. Sage and um, incense and salt's not going to keep a demon out. The only thing that's going to keep a demon out is the blood of Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. You know what I mean? Amen. And people just stop, you know, please stop watching the Hollywood crap. It's That's all it is. It's Hollywood crap. You know what I mean? Uh, soul has no at all, zero effect on demons. Sage. The sage. Yeah. Sage, I heard it's the opposite. They try to use that to communicate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah <laughs> i'm not trying to be mean but that's that's, that's what i keep reading and hearing you know yeah so oh well, yeah when they yeah. do their rituals they use sage and stuff to actually you know, manifest them you know what i mean they, it's not gonna repel them you know what i mean you know it's the other thing too it's funny when uh, people say well we're gonna got gargoyles right they put gargoyles on houses and buildings the so-called ward off evil spirits mm -hmm. how do you use something evil to ward off something evil <laughs> you're drawing it in like a magnet yeah <laughs> <laughs> makes no sense at all you know what i mean yeah you're putting a beacon up and saying come on in baby you know it's just literally we got monsters coming down the street i mean it's just crazy it's crazy it's crazy dan yeah and again demons are not fallen angels but rather the spurious spirits the children of fallen angels uh the apostate offspring of angels plain and simple you know what i mean that's that's what um gary writes as well you know what i mean his studies and all that 
And, you know, it, you can't get around it. I mean, again, I don't mean to repeat myself, but you can go to multiple sources, ancient cultures, even if you don't believe in the Bible, right? You uh, use ancient, ancient cultures, you know, for example, ancient mythology, which is not mythology at all. And all, all of it matches. And it's not a coincidence. They all say the the sons of gods, or they call them the gods, had sex with women to create an offspring. You know, you can't get around it, plain and simple. You're not going to get around it. You know what I mean? And uh, the set that theory is debunked, plain and simple. I mean, you don't need to be even a scholar to even realize it's debunked. Yeah, I mean, plain and simple. The Bible is very clear mm -hmm. that angels had sex with the woman, and that's it. And they created an offspring. You know what I mean? And the thing is, they say, well, the evil people, like uh, Brian was saying. In that case, how many evil people are out there today? Where Where are the giants? You know what I mean? Like, why wasn't Alistair yeah. Crowley a giant? You know, <laughs> you know, why wasn't Madame Pawlowski a giant? You know what I mean? And it also talks about female. There were female um, giants mm. as well. You know, and uh, yeah, mm. unreal. It's interesting. It's interesting when you go into shape shifting, right? Like these characters come in and out. Yeah, and they'll say, "Well, look like a dogman one moment, look like a big hairy animal, or you know, whatever Sasquatch, Bigfoot, whatever." And it keeps altering shapes. It's kind of interesting, right? Yeah. When you talk about embodied spirits. Cause they're manifesting when they come into our, when they come in, when they actually show up, they're, they're changing a form. They're taking on a form. It's of some shape or form, you know, then they just disappear mm -hmm. and then they can inhabit. I mean, you can go to Mark four or excuse me, Mark five. They can in, embody, they can inhabit mm -hmm. human. They yep. can, it's straight up. I mean, it, it's biblical yep. and Legion, you know, whatever, there mm -hmm. could be thousands of them inside, whatever the narrative, you know, whatever, but there's a, it's crazy, Dan. Like it, it's just, it's all there. The data is there. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just kind of scary. It's kind of scary when people just dis dismiss it, you know, then they, it's some, it's some trippy stuff. But we'll talk about that sage and stuff. I'm not, di listen, I'm not discredit when I'm, when I'm going to talk about later with the Indians, I'm not yeah. discrediting any of the cultures at all. I, th I think it's interesting that they have so much in tune. They don't have to have astronomy. They don't have, I mean, they don't have to have any tools. They don't have to have any telescopes. They don't have to have nothing <laughs> back yeah. then. Like they didn't have to have anything. They just use their senses and, it's it. It's and you know, what whatever their visual yeah. you know standpoint. They just use the the environment. They understood how to. It's just crazy, man. I'm not trying to give them credit either. I mean, I don't be communicating with demons. But what I'm getting at is they was in tuned with something, some shape or form. And they're not. They was not. I wouldn't say the Indians was ignorant in any shape or form, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as far as yeah, then knowing the land and you know just being able to you know. All their, as far as their education standpoint, I wouldn't put them down in any shape or form, but I would say their techniques and getting shamans and, mm. you know, trying to communicate with the spiritual world and the underworld and all that, that's a, that's a big no for me. But uh, as far as agriculture and, you know, military tactics and being able to create anything as far as weaponry, all kinds of different things, all the stuff to just to be able to map and not have a GPS, phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? So these things things they knew about that they was writing about they knew about it for thousands and that, that millennium their people all their ancestors knew about it you know they then they can they continue teaching their their uh, young teaching their descendants you know so it's it's crazy yeah but anyways yeah that's why i'll do a close on that too man like yeah burning sage okay they, that's actually used for rituals uh, Anne Marie even said the same thing. They actually use that for rituals to summon these things. You know what I mean? But um, you see these new age wackos uh, were running around burning sages and all that to say to keep off spirits. It doesn't do that. You know what I mean? It, it draws them in. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, so these things do not work. Okay, to ward off demons. A cross does not work. So called holy water is no such thing. Okay, it does not work. Okay, um, no incense from the Catholic Church or these mm -hmm. little objects they got none of that stuff works okay and also mm. these little um talismans and all that people need to stop watching movies mm. you know what i mean plain and simple salt does not work sage does not work any of these little whatever incense do not work you know, okay again just the blood of jesus amen. christ which you got to call upon amen that's the only thing that works to get rid of them plain and simple bottom line amen you know I mean? and yeah and um you know the set like theory too like uh, it just like really burns me up it really does and like how could you not uh it, you know what I mean? Like, it's written black and white in scripture. In some places, red too. But, you know what I mean? But in black and white, it clearly says the sons of God, the fallen angels, made it with the woman. You know what I mean? Had sex in detail, in vivid detail. Okay? you. How do you escape that? How, I mean, like, if there's anybody that still believes in the, in the chat room, if you still believe in the Seth like theory, if anybody is there, right, please explain that. Please explain that how the Bible's wrong, how the ancient cultures are wrong, how... How, how all they're all wrong, but you guys are right. So, so if anybody in the chat room, 
uh, is uh, believing the Sethite theory still to this point. I mean, yeah, you really need to read the scriptures, and I'm going to challenge you on that. I'm going to call you right out on that, you know, plain and simple. Mm. Because you, you're you calling the Bible a liar, plain and simple. It's interesting. It's interesting, Diane, to get back on the sage and all this stuff. I'm just going to throw this out here. It's interesting. And you know this from a paranormal standpoint. Yeah. You know, you used to, you know, look into the paranormal stuff years ago. It's interesting, the temperature and climate, right? Yep. Like, it, they're always associating colder temperatures with, you know, paranormal and everything. Do you agree? Like, it's always some type of colder temp, right? It's kind of interesting that everything, <laughs> that's all they talk about now is the whole climate narrative, right? It yeah. kind of blows my mind. Like, when you're so-called saying we need to alter the temperature of this shape or form, or, you know, then you get into, see, this is where I stand on this. This is why... When you look into UFO technology, what Hitler had, they was using, there's moisture in the air. I've, I've said this on many shows. Is it possible? Is it more than likely? Yes. That the human standpoint, they've been able to figure out how to use weather modification, all this stuff, Dan. And then is it possible that this stuff starts in you know, these, these spiritual standpoints start interacting in some shape or form in these ancient gateways, right? Is Andy Leuven, they, that's why you're, we're seeing uptick of this so-called UAPs, UFOs, or whatever. Is it something to do with the temperature? I mean, I'm just asking. I'm asking yeah. you, what do you think? I mean, I don't know. What do you think, man? Because it it seems, you know, we can see this stuff on the ground, right? Like color temperatures, looking yeah. for paranormal light. You can see stuff, right? Or whatever. If you go searching for it, you'll find it, but you probably don't want to be searching for it. But what what is going on in the skies, you know? I'm yeah. just saying. I'm just saying. Well, to see what your input is on it. It's just something crazy to think the about. Paranormal stuff and when something was real, you know what I mean? It was always involved in the, a massive temperature flux. Like, in other words, it dropped 30, 40 degrees, you know? And, uh, within seconds. Yeah, within seconds. Boom, just like yeah, that, yeah. You know what I mean? In the, in the day, well, I've been out, the mm, summer, you know? Mm, mm, mm. Well, I've been outside. You know, the, you can, the sun will cook you like a, it's just blazing hot, but it'll be like 20 degrees. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the sun will bake you. So it's interesting how. You know, even and I, you know, the the fluctuating the temperatures and stuff too is what blows my mind. And then, the, like I said, the you know DARPA, all that weather modification. You know, we get into that's an whole nurse, you know, showing itself. But I think that it has something to do with why you have these natural, you know, these national parks, national, you know, this forest, and people will be hiking and be like a hundred degrees outside, and all of a sudden, like you said, Dan, 30, 40 temperature jump, yeah. and then all of a sudden they have an encounter, you know, some shape or form, right? And the animals pick it up. That's why it gets quiet. Animals pick it up. They take off. They take off booking it in the right, you know, opposite direction. So, like, you know, their senses are different. They're not tuned in. They're different. You know, that's just, that's you can go look that up. That's just fact. That's facts. There's a lot of different. They're tuned in to different frequencies and stuff like that and sounds and um, all creatures have that. Yeah. They're all different. They're different than us. But uh, but anyway, I didn't go on a big rant. But I just want to chime in there. Kind of interesting. But go ahead, Dan. Ran away, Brian. Ran away. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I just, I just throwing it out. My, what's on my mind, you know? Yeah, right. Man. Something to think about. Something to ponder on. You know? It is. Yeah, you know I mean, and um, you know, like well, we we could bring up more of the. I mean, I didn't even bring up the Greek mythology part, which I wanted to do, but for the concept of time. Yeah. But we go did, for it, Dan. I mean, go for it. I'll I'll I just sit back ready. and listen. Oh, okay. I mean, well, I we got because I thought we would have enough already, but um. Yeah, go go for whatever else you got because I know we got a ton of material to speak of in the next. We don't have a little. I'm, All right, I'll so just sit back and drink Mark, coffee. He says, I believe the giants were created by the fallen angel, but not by having sex. Dude, what? <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean here, Mark, but what part of the sons of God came into the daughters of men, had sex with them, took them as wives, and bore children? What part of that you don't understand? Not to sound like a jerk to you, because you listen to us all the time. Thank you so much. But what part of that you don't understand? I, I for the life of me, okay. Uh, and uh, all the ancient, they all say the same thing. They had sex relations with these women, right? What part of that? I, I please tell me. Uh, what part of that you don't understand? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, do I have to go over this again? Uh, they came into the doors of men, vividly sexual details of what they did with the uh, the daughters of men. Hmm. I mean, I don't. I mean, I, do I have to get X-rated? Well, I'm not going to do that. But I mean, like, you don't know. do that. Don't do that, Dan. Yeah. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go X-rated. Yeah, we don't that's want that. disgusting. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, so um, like, what? What part? I, I I don't get it. I mean, I don't. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, how much more do you need? I mean, like, you're sitting there literally calling the Bible a liar. Like, I I don't get it. I mean, how else do you think they created him? 
You know, they, well, it says they had sex with them. Say they came into them, right? Says they got pregnant with them by them, and says they had children by them. What more detail do you need? Do you actually need to physically see, you know, go back in time or something and see this happen? You know what I mean? And I, I don't get it. I'm, I don't mean to sound like a jerk, man. Uh, but man, I tell you, I, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Like, I guess you can't teach some people stuff. I mean, like they're stuck on their ways, and that's it. You know what I mean? And that's that that's that spirit that God talks about. The delusion. Well, you know I mean, um, Marky Mark, I've seen you on here. I pre- we appreciate you. Yeah, I know that. No, I think he really is like he 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 pops verses up. Listen, bless you. I understand. I I get it. I get where he's coming from, Dan. I'm where he's going. I get what he's saying. He's talking about uh, through technology, scientific technology, and stuff like that. I get it. But then I totally agree with the the word what you're saying, what, what the Bible says, but I get what he's saying about the manipulation and then what would be going on today in the terms of what, what's really going on in the realm today. I think he's comparing, are you still there? Yep. Okay. I, I thought I might've died. It was buffering there for a minute. Um, I think he's comparing what's going on today and comparing it to back then. But then, you know, that's, I think that's what it is. I think that's what I, cause I've listened, I've, I've seen his stuff pop up on the chat. Uh, several times before on some other shows that we've done. And I think he's comparing to what's been shown today, but then I have something to say about that. I've read, I can't remember all the books cause there's so much stuff that I read throughout the years. I think it was like 10 years ago. I stumbled upon a, a book. It was old talking about what we're talking about here about the sex standpoint, you know, and the giants, you know, the being born and the uh, angels taking on the, uh, the women and, taking literally forcing them to take them or in some house in some cases i heard and read that the women volunteered because they was so and mm. you know marveling after this deity so i've heard and read that the incubation period is smaller it's not nine months like it is traditionally for a human but i heard it's like four to five months and in some cases there's documentation i cannot remember where it's at these books i can't remember the names to save my life that the, the painful, the process was just horrific. The birth, a lot of the women would pass away. Uh, the babies would just, it was just too much on the frame. In some cases they would come out looking, you know, normal size. And then they would, they mm. would grow at a, a high rate of, you know, high rate of time. They would, you know, accelerate to a taller being, but then some cases they would get really big in the womb and the woman couldn't take it on. And, um, some really sick stuff. That unfortunately, you mm-hmm. know, I've looked at and read, but I see where his point is too. And I, and Dan, point. I get, and I get your point too. I get all of it, but I understand, but I have to agree with Dan and I have to agree with scripture. But I get, I oh, get, he's, what um, he, I using, get what, he's using Matthew 22 30. That's what he just put it. And uh, I got up on screen now. Uh, so he used Matthew 20 30 in his defense, right? He says, because uh, Matthew 22 30, chapter 22, verse 30, for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but as are as the angels in heaven. In yeah. heaven, okay? That's not, that's after the resurrection and all that. That's in the end times. That's not talking any, this has nothing to do at all with the fallen angels. Nothing at all. And, and I've heard they, people talk about this before yeah, in, they, in churches. Mm-hmm. And like, this has nothing to do. They don't have sex in heaven, no. When the angels left the humble and bold, okay, they were stricken of those kind of things. I mean, you don't, you don't need sex in heaven. You don't need any of that stuff. When you're on the earth, that stuff comes to you, human nature and all that. But yeah, this is for in the resurrection, okay, they neither marry, talk about people, right? Or, or given in marriage, right? But are as the angels in heaven of God, the angels of God in heaven. We're not talking about these angels. We talk about the fallen angels. When they were uh, kicked out of the humble abode, which was heaven, they're not in heaven no more. And the clan, clan you know, I mean, I'm going to do this one more time. Sorry, guys. So. Well, the you know, I'll interject here real quick, Dan. If yeah. you go back to Jude. Yep. And you go look at the, uh, when it's talked about in Solomon and Gomorrah and talking about it, looks, they look like men. The yep. angels look like men, right? And they were having so, sex with strange flesh, right? And strange flesh, like literally. And if you look at that narrative, think about it. We're talking about in this broadcast, we're getting ready to get into some more stuff about, you know, we're talking about demons and stuff manifesting and all this. 
is it too much to ask? Well, is it too much to think about that angels can literally take on a form of a six foot five eleven or whatever average size man? That's what, and then you go to Jude and you look at that, and that's that's what's going on. You know, they're very persuasive, understanding. People worship them. They're bowing. You know, all this stuff. They, we did. You know that. Yeah, I mean, it's bib. That's that's true, right, Dan? I mean, it is what the Bible said. They're, they they yeah. look like men. Jude you know? one seven says refers yes. to the, those are the men of Sodom, desire sexual relations. And one view contends that the object of the attraction was men making their offense homosexuality. But the other view argues that the saw angels as sexual partners making their offense angel dash human sexual relations. That's what that's talking about. You know what I mean? And uh, it's Jude one seven. And when he was yeah. saying, in, and again, he was uh, referring to Matthew 22, uh, 20, 30, I mean, and which has nothing to do at all with the fallen angels. That's after the resurrection and angels in heaven now don't have sex. You know what I mean? Uh, the, the, the fallen angels do, did, I'm sorry, they did. That's why they were, you know, that's a big reason why they were uh, put in prison where they are. You know what I mean? And again, uh, let's go over this one more time. <laughs> Uh, Genesis 6, right? And let's do it slow this time. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them. So Adam and Eve having adult kids and whatever. So anyway, it started populating. So the sons of God, okay, these are the fallen angels, saw daughters of men and they were fair. And they took them as wives, right? What else do you do with your wife? Because uh, Mark said, oh, come doesn't mean, you know, give, giving sperm to them. Well, in this case, it does. Yes, in that, actually, it most certainly does, you know. And, Lord, and also, where, yeah, there were giants in the earth in those days and also after, and the sons of God came into the daughters of men. Yes, they came into the daughters of men, all right. And yes, that means copulating because other scriptures say copulating, which, you know, implanting a seed. And they brought children to them, and the same became mighty men in which men were renowned. And, they, you know, it goes on how they... Uh, Corrupted all flesh, you know what I mean? And it wasn't just DNA stuff, man. It was just like they were literally having sex with things. And then you got in um, uh, Jude 1 7 talks about that. And I forgot we're in Job too. Uh, I mean, it talks about sexual relations with angels and humans. You can't get around us, okay? Plain and simple, you are not going to get around us. You know what I mean? It doesn't work that way, you know? And uh, the set right there is a satanic doctrine. That's what it is, you know what I mean? It's plain and simple. The Bible says it very clear. Yeah, you know I mean, you can't get any clearer than that. Yeah, what else do you do with your wife? How else do you produce children with your wife? Yeah, come on and tell them. You know what I mean? What the Bible says. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what they did. Plain and simple. You know what I mean? It's like you can't beat this. You know what I mean? It's a, it, it's clear as day. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I don't know how much better I can say this. <laughs> well, like I said, they manifest. They come into the realm. They're fallen. They come into the realm of the earthly realm. They they're they look like men. Yeah, you know, I mean, they're if they're six, I don't care for six five. <laughs> you know, they yep. can still take a wife, take a woman, yep, and board children. And that's what that's why it's all. And, I, and it, look, I'm not, I, Mark and Mark. We appreciate you getting on here. We love we love that you comment and interact. You know. And I get Dan, I get it, man. Like I get it. Marky Mark has been burning it up. He's been he's been burning it up on the chat for like four or five shows we've done. Bless him. But um I get where he's coming from, but I will hold to the word of God like yeah. always, you know, and um but I get it on a manipulation standpoint of where we're at today, on the standpoint of where they're at and how they're, you know, replicating and doing things, things that we can't talk about on here. So um but yeah, on the on the backhand of things, like I said, that Jude always puts, you know, when I go back and hear people say, well, this is this, this is that, well, go back and explain to me about Jude. Go out, mm. go back and explain to me about all these different things about these, they look like men. You know, the, you know the, obviously we're talking about Genesis 6 verse yeah. 4, and people just, you know, we could get into a whole nother, you know, you can get into, we become the sons of God, by the way. Mm. When you get into Matthew, we, we become the sons of God because we are, uh, of like Jesus paid it in full. We become mm. the sons of God because of what Jesus did. The sons of God in the Old Testament are the sons of God of the angelic. Okay, so people get all, if you, if you can hear me, I thought it might have cut out, but the sons of God are referring to the fallen, an, like angelic mm. standpoint. I hope everybody yeah. can hear me. It's cutting out, but, um, 
I just wanted to make that point. We become the sons of God because of what Christ did. And I think, and then that's when people get upset when you start talking about Hebrews and stuff, Dan, yeah. and they, about Jesus lowered himself to the, lower than the angels and he took on the flesh so we could have a place, it literally took on all human flesh so he could uh, die for our sins and have a place where we can reside in heaven. And then when we have, I think it's in Luke, talk about referring to it and Hebrews, I think it's might be Luke, I can't remember the exact verse, um, that we'll have the intellect of the angels like be more of a superior sta- stance whenever we drop this flesh. You know, that that shows you how much the Father cares about us. His image means something. And But yeah, and these crazy fallen angelic beings taking on human flesh and then going in here and, well, I don't know if it's 100% human flesh. Did, did I lose you, Dan? Yep, you're still there. Okay. But I'm just saying that the human flesh standpoint, you know, they mating with the daughters of men and literally putting in seed and all, you know, they're changing, getting altered and having giant Nephilim, you know. But anyway, uh, we'll, we'll move forward. Yeah. And if you want to get into the um, Ken the Hard Giant. Oh, yeah, sure. So I did a show on this a couple months ago. I hope everybody can hear me. It seems like it keeps yeah, popping you, out. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Okay, good, good. Uh, Kandahar Giant. So, if we want to just touch base on it. So, here's my theory on it. I'm just going to give you a little quick uh, nidbit of information on it. So, my theory is well, I mean, this bad... I'm sorry, oh, I just cut you off. Yeah, go explain ahead. Explain what this is, what, what the scenario okay. is for us. So, let's just start back from... Let's just rewind that because I get so stoked about yeah. this topic. So, Kandahar Giant... S- Having in 2002, if my memory serves me correct, yep, uh, we're, correct talk, yeah. we're talking about you know, were talking about Afghanistan, and this you know we we all know the story. There's a certain thing that we can't talk about in 2001, but then they was talking about weapons of mass destruction, all those different things. And this character Dan's slides up there pretty much explain a lot of it. They send platoon, and then I think they send another platoon to go in and infiltrate this big this big beast, this big man. Um, I think, well, approximately, what, 12 feet tall, like 1,300 mm. pounds, something like that. Um, they destroyed the first platoon, and I think the second platoon was able to uh, at least get him down, and it took forever, and he mm. impaled when they first rolled up. He impaled one, started swinging. This man, you know, deceased, and then they, their training, their military training, because this happened, like, literally this happened. I know a bunch of people that didn't even have to go to Afghanistan. They was training in caves in America and they served as Rangers, military, all this stuff. And they was training in caves all the way, even past the 2002 narrative, all the way up into the 2011. I heard all up into the, you know, we can talk about other topics. I don't know if I'm going to get pegged on the wet on the show here or not, but all the way up and just till not too long ago, they're training in caves and pointing up. Okay. So if you think about this, they was, there, there was a gent, there was a, I shouldn't say gentleman, there's a big man in a cave system, right? And he's guarding, supposedly they're in a disclosed location out in the middle of nowhere. My opinion is, Dan, yeah. this thing popped up and it manifested a portal gateway system of some shape or form. And the military picked it up because not too far from the, from the so-called area of uh, the Kandahar giant where I've kind of looked where I think it might've popped on. And I think I might've had the location pegged. And when you look at that narrative and there's not too, there's military bases everywhere. So if we have the technology to pick up any kind of EMF readings and all that, they must have had a big signature. And this guy pops up out of nowhere, Dan, because in my opinion, this dude, would have been searching for food. And then uh, L.A. Marzulli and all them guys, they've done a really good job of looking, literally uh, hand on uh, some of the men went on record and talked about it and said that, you know, like it had like 500 year plus armor, like Roman armor on, like wearing big, you know, Roman armor. And I thought it was kind of strange. It looked that the that's what his attire was, right? So it's kind of like, wow, you know? So how in the world is this guy just sitting in a cave and how is he, is he guarding the cave? I'm like, nah, surely not. I, I kept going back and forth, thought about it for years. It's like, man. And then the then all this other stuff had happened. You got you got the rating of we talked about that on the show. I think you got they rated the whole thing with the museum. I don't want to get into it too much. I'm gonna watch what I say. The whole Gilgamesh narrative, Gilgamesh tablets, all these different archaeology, Samaritan tablets, all these different things. And uh, 
all this different stuff. And then lo and behold, 2002 shows up and this guy pops up. Right. So I'm thinking the only thing I can think of is, and then another thing, the agility, they talk about the agility, the speed, and then to get him down from what I hear. And they had two rows of teeth and they was shooting him and his jaw falls off. Like it finally, and he's still moving. The guy's taking and what he's doing. So if you look at the biblical narrative, I, I got one. If you look at the biblical narrative, you think about Goliath and, and David. The, the when he when he's saying I chopped off the Philistine's head and he picks it up and raises it up, I'm almost gonna get real with y'all. This is I'm gonna go Kentucky flavor on you. So if you think <laughs> if I start talking fast, just slow me down, Dan. <laughs> I think that's a I think it's foretelling. I think it's a uh, when you look into reanimating and all this death, uh, their body being able to rejuvenate at a fast pace. You see all this stuff in all kinds of different movies, et cetera. I think this cat, I think this guy could rejuvenate. And they knew that first platoon, when they found all the body, all that horrible stuff that happened to that first platoon, that bad boy took, this man already took a bunch of wet bullets. Okay. He already took a bunch of hits. And then they show up with the second one. It's like, hey, we got to infiltrate. We got to get this thing down. So after they pop his jaw, from, from what I'm hearing, remember the gap, the, the whole, all the intel on it, but they tore his jaw off and they shot into like into his throat and finally was able to infiltrate that and get him down. And then they brought a Chinook in and all this stuff with a pallet and they literally hauled him off into America is what yeah, I'm hearing. Tie him count. Too, right? like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bind him down, put him on a big skid. So my point is. Was he after they got him down? Was he was he completely dead? Was he sedated? Mm -hmm. It must have been out of it to get him. He must have been still kicking. I think I still think he probably still living. Yeah. Then they maybe they's letting him re like he has more time to recuperate. But uh, my opinion is the guy was not only there. He wasn't there that long. I don't think he was there for not there not that long because for them to infiltrate and pick up. I bet you. I bet you. Satellite. Whatever you want to call it. We can get into satellites. Whatever imagery. Whatever we want to talk about the signal must have popped up on some kind of radar system mm -hmm. and pegged it. And this bad boy is getting you know rowdy in his cave system. And they was like, Oh man. So they immediately went out there and they couldn't, they couldn't handle what they seen. They just say, okay, well we picked up some kind of signature and this, this guy was literally impelling, you know, taking out everything that comes in his way because mm -hmm. I just don't, I can't, I can't put it in perspective, Dan, because if a character was sitting there all those years, just, just, just think about it. If he could live up to be 400 years, 200 years, he's going to be uh, foraging for food. Mm -hmm. He's going to get hungry. Yep. So there was no reports of it. There's no reports of anybody saying anything associated with the locals. Anybody would been like, oh, yeah, I mean, we got us a crazy man on the run down here you know, chasing <laughs> down. a. He's tearing down a burger stand, you know, whatever. You know, there was there was something there was something going on there, Dan. That's just my opinion. I think it was interdimensional portal. Something popped up. This bad guy shows up and then they had Plus, to try to they had. The rituals they do out there anyway who knows how that got there yeah you know what I, mean? I don't know i don't know yeah it's crazy yeah article yes in 2002 elite tactical teams was said to have killed a kandahar giant a 13 foot tall beast with flaming red hair six fingers on each hand and two uh sets of teeth now this right here six fingers on each hand and two sets of teeth uh that's normally um, that's what, you know, a lot of these giants, when we show you, when you do the show with the newspaper stuff, well, you're going to see that it's going to be very familiar. Now, you know, most of them had six fingers on each hand, six toes on each foot. And again, when I said, uh, last uh, Friday, when the Native Americans, which we could go right into that after this, uh, Native Americans, when they went how, okay, they wasn't saying how to you. That's just the Hollywood stuff. You know what I mean? They did this for you to hold up your hand, if, especially if it was a person with huge, enormous stature. Uh, they would do that and they count their fingers. And if they had six toes or six things, and the Indians did battles with the, tons of battles with these uh, giants. And um, the giants have a big play in the King Philip War and also in the Revolutionary War. That's not a record, you know what I mean? Mainly in the King Philip War, you know what I mean? But um, yeah. yeah, it's crazy that the stuff you. <laughs> the stuff that's hidden from these books, you know, I mean, the history books, but yeah, it's a common theme six fingers on each hand, six toes on each foot, uh, two sets of teeth that's two rows on each, you know, bottom and top. So, yeah, it's, it's a common theme. And this was um, in the Middle East, yeah. yeah, and there's tons of publications on this. Some call it a myth, whatever the case, and of course, they're gonna say that, you know, but mm -hmm. um, tracking down the Kinda, Kindahar giant on, of, of Afghanistan. And yeah, you know, they all have the same story about this. And uh, of course, the military That's would it. cover something. Like, they, you think they would come out in the, the papers and say, "Oh, look where we found." You think they would expose yeah, that to the world? No, no, because that <laughs> no. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. Now, Navajo Indians—they're mm -hmm. scared to talk about this stuff. Yeah. 
to anybody because they know they get their land confiscated or whatever. They don't want to speak about this stuff. Come on. These guys, look, it happened to be in the Afghan, Afghanistan. This happened, this event, this, this situation happened. Okay. So what about all the other, the tales and writings and stuff that the Indians was talking about? These, these giants taking our women and stuff like that. Come on now, guys, this is an isolated event. Something happened. So it's a, so they wanted to cover it up. And I could go on a big, I could, I could speculate and talk about this all night. I've, I've looked at all, a lot of different angles of where and how this even was just a thing. And, you know, this report of how and why he was in the ground. Did he come out of a tunnel system? Did he crawl out? Did he come from, I was thinking, man, that's a big, big tunnel system from, um, from the ocean. I was thinking way underground, under deep. And I was thinking, did he crawl out and just happen to be showing up? But then I was like, no, because there would have been more. And then I think about all the stuff that I've studied and looked at and here in my parts of the, you know, the woods, you know, and I'm thinking, why in the world is he guarding something? You know, I, I kept thinking, is there something uh, associated with that tunnel? Was the tunnel significant to what they just need to get the guy out of the way? I kept thinking, do they need to get the guy out of the way and then infiltrate the tunnel? Yeah. That's what I kept thinking. Was there more, was there more wealth of, of stuff that, who cares about that? They, they ship him off. They, they, what needed to be was in the tunnel. That's what I kept thinking. Was the tunnel system more valuable than what this creature was? In well, my since opinion. Since Gulf was there, they've been saying they've been, uh, a lot of people reported about military uh, confiscating these remains and all that and bringing stuff home in containers, uh, uh, archaeological stuff, and um, which a lot of people in the Middle East are kind of ticked off at it because to them it's sacred, you know? Uh, so they, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and it's just they can spin whatever they want to spin yeah. and they want to keep you. They don't want you to, they don't want you speaking of it. And that's why it blows my mind. When you go into the Indian of the, uh, go back into the narrative of the Indians, yep. they talk about these giant creatures, you know, and it, it was so interesting, right? They was able to infiltrate, get them down. They was able to go to war to these things. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, they, they, like I said earlier, they, they was well tactical. They knew what they knew their lands. They knew where these things come out. I mean, me and you did a show, Dan. I think it was on the Nimrod show that we did, and I showed a, uh, all the spirals, the petroglyphs, hieroglyphics and stuff, all that stuff. Like, we literally was looking at that, and I was like, okay, so we got a giant man come through a portal, and these people are getting taken. And it's all throughout. You can go to Arizona. You can look at all the data. And it, and it goes, we can go on a big rant about it, but it just makes me wonder what's really going on, Dan. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Well, but anyways, for the sake of time, I know we got a lot to cover. We still got a truck ton of stuff, but this, we could talk about a Kandahar giant to the rest of the show. <laughs> but uh, it's really cool. It's, it's something to really ponder on, think about it all, and think about what happened prior to that event. And there's some really crazy stuff that went down in the whole narrative no, in Afghanistan. Uh, the Kandahar giant was a redheaded giant too, but so it looks like we got ginger giants around. But yeah, the, the right here in this, this uh, publication here says this ancient legend about giants in Nevada will completely blow your mind. And no, it's not a legend because we actually have the newspaper articles to prove that. But anyway, according to an ancient legend, North America was once inhabited by a race of giants that was much taller and stronger than the average man. And these giants are redhead tribe of cannibals. Remember, the Bible says they ate humans. So mm -hmm. uh, how is that really far fetched? No, because the Bible and the ancient texts all said the same thing, right? And this is modern day publication. They were known as CT um, Ka, uh, often harassed of a uh, Pachu tribe, with war and captured their victims to eat. And with a uh, little uh, geological research, it turns out the giant Love Lock uh, Nevada may have been just a, a legend, but. They have been very real. And of all these legends in the history of the state of Nevada, uh, this one is sure to blow your mind. So it talks about these legends, whatever, which are true, again, because they got the newspaper articles to prove these things. You know what I mean? Mm, mm, damn. Fun. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And, it, it, and it's interesting. I'll, real quick, I I'll, 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 I'll said I was going to be quiet during the rest of this no, broadcast no, no, no. or, you know, before we <laughs> – I, I want to chime in, too. I already Go ahead. my uh, presentation out, so, you know. Oh, you did? Okay, cool. Okay. Well, just even talking about this Nevada uh, situation here, right? So get this, Dan. So I've heard, literally have heard this, that the Indians, they are literally, because they're so convinced that they're, this is like 2020. I was listening to it, like listening about this, this information that 
they're trained, they're literally training their people and really literally um, going into defense mode and preparing for the new, for literally the new incursion of these so-called giants coming. This is literally something they're, they're, they're talking about. Like the giants are preparing. I mean, the, the, the Indians are preparing for like these giants to come. And I kept thinking about cycles with, you know, the Maseroff and how they kept up the track of it. You could go and look at, I, I thought about, you know, we're speaking of Nevada, right? I yeah. thought about the Lucifer telescope, you know, they, it's not, was technically called the it's the, I think it's part of the machinery of that telescope in Arizona. And it makes you wonder what they're really looking for and what they're looking at. And I think it's a cycle. I think they're looking at the, cause you can go out West and you can see all kinds of stuff at the Skinwalker ranch. We're talking about the, the Mesa, you know, like the, it has the Palladians, it has the Orion and it has one more. And there's a, even out in Arizona, they have all this remnant of different things that they keep talking about these particular things that are written on rocks. And these Indians was doing some kind of depiction. And I'm literally thinking I'm, this is just me guys. I don't know. Like, I think it's a story. I think it's concordance. Yeah. And I think they, I think they know when the clock and I think the Indians know it, they don't have to have any kind of technology. They just literally are so in tune with the land and, and God's creation. Then they can just tell the timing of the, of the constellations. And I really do think, just like this Nevada thing and all these different things that I couldn't even put it in perspective when I heard that in 2020, that they're literally, I think it's 2020. I'm pretty sure they're training and they're literally preparing for an event of like, and I couldn't believe it that they're literally preparing for giants to come up. You talk about Nevada, right? And uh, so they said they went on the, the redhead giants when the only ones discovered this, said they found two other ones uh, in a dry lake bed and uh, one skeleton measured 8.5 feet tall and the other one nearly 10 feet tall. Back in 1939, and another giant skeleton was discovered uh, on some ranch. Yeah, it measures seven foot seven. Mm. And I guess they got some of the remains in this museum out in Nevada there. Mm. The Winnemucca Museum. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Yeah. So, so what? Oh, so what's that? So you, you so interesting, right? So redheaded giant, redheaded giants, or even in Kentucky. There's there's reports in Lexington, Kentucky, all that, but tons of redhead giant narrative. I mean, it's it's inundated with redhead giants, and you know it's you know I, I don't know, damn, we could I mean we could go down some big uh, we could have dude I know we don't even have enough time tonight. I, I mean, dude, have I even showed anything tonight? No, I haven't. Like literally, we we the stuff that I've got pulled up, it would still take like two hours to cover. This is insane. I I didn't realize. I mean, like you said, we could have a we could have. 15 different giant shows and here to here to 2023 is over, yeah. <laughs> you know? So, um, but yeah, Dan, it is what it is, man. I, I, you know, and people just don't realize that this is a thing. I, um, they think it's just all folklore, uh, just a theory or just a, you know, conspiracy yeah. or whatever. But then the, the, it's right there in your face. All the stuff is boom. It's right. I mean, the, the data is there, the Indians and the Indians are scared. Like I'm not trying to be mean, but see, I I'm, I'm pretty sure I have Indian in me. Um, but the, you know, like it goes way back, but the problem, the point is the, the Navajo Indians, they're scared guys. Like this is ridiculous. I got like, just think about all the stuff, the infiltration of the land of what happened when the Indians roamed this earth, like we literally had full blown tribes, and then I'm not trying to be mean. I shouldn't even say on here. I probably shouldn't say it, but it was actually their land was taken, like taken and manipulation, all this stuff. And, and I still think there's a lot of, we could go on a big dot. I don't even want to get into it on the air here, but there's a lot of stuff, nefarious things that went on with that. And then yeah. these poor people, these poor people, Dan. So the people that are still here, they're like, Hey, we got, they're talking about giants, dogmen, I mean, you, the Navajo, there's like, I was talking to somebody today about it, the prophecies, all these things that they're prophecy and their so-called, you know, uh, doctrine of the Navajo and all this stuff. I'm not putting them down. I'm just telling you for research. They talk about all these different things, talking about they didn't come from here, talking about ancient portals and all this stuff. And I mean, we can, you know, categorize the stargates, whatever, talking about giants and uh, dogmen. They have a lot of encounters with that, you know, the reptilians, all these different things. And they're, and um, it's a, it has to be that, Dan. It's had to be, they, they talk about parallel dimensions. They talk yep. about, it's just insane. They talk about the star people. They talk about star people. They talk about, they climbed, you know, there's articles on, they, even the Hopi, the Hopi people, they 
talking about the climb to rock and these different things and found their way to these great light to talking about the earth, talking about the face of the earth. And I was thinking in all my mind, I'm still rattling on in my brain about this, you know, you know, talking about Cain, you know, going, you know, back to biblical here about fugitive vagabond in the earth, in the earth. You're talking about inside the earth. You're talking about, we can go on a big tangent about Argotha. We can get into some big topics with this subject and it goes along. And what was so weird about it is the, the Indians knew this. The Indians knew that the there was other people, like other things going on. There was interdimension. They would literally talk about these things just popping in and out, and they knew how to infiltrate them. They knew, and this is way back. So what's going on today? And I kept thinking about it, and that's why I did on the broadcast last week on Friday. I was like, look at all the military bases just in America. And I thought about all the national parks, all national forests, all this stuff. What are they? What is going on? And what are they? What are they keeping tabs on? And I just, I just, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's a lot to take in. I know that I'm rambling on here, but I mean, you can go to Wyoming, you can go to uh, all kinds of different places. Uh, I can read right here on some things, just a bits of information, but they, they literally have petroglyphs, all this stuff, the mm. devil, the devil's tower in Wyoming, right? The devil's tower in Wyoming. And then they like anybody will come across and say, well, this is all just figurative and all this stuff. So why why is these all these Indian cultures saying, well, we came from here, we came from this, and you, then you can get into biblical cosmology. We can get into, uh, you know, we can get across the ice wall, different planes, you know, the different lands outside the wall. And I kept contemplating. I was like, what's going on with all this? There has to be a correlation. That's for another show in itself. But yeah, that I kind of give you all something to that me and well, Dan it, can do for a further show. But does my mic sound better, people? Uh, so everybody said my mic was uh, kind of low, so. I tuned. I turned it up here. So let me know, guys, if um, the microphone, um, I, my lo- voice is louder. And when Brian was talking about that, I pulled this up too. This is a Native American stories of giants, and yeah, they talk about and you, any tribe. Here's the thing too: how many tribes here in, in North America? Uh, it's including Canada, right? Most of these tribes didn't even know the other ones existed, right? All of them have the same stories. So in, in it's not just North America. You go to Central America, South America. The Mayans, Aztecs have the same stories about them. Uh, you know, again, these are cultures that didn't even know the other ones existed. You know what I mean? And so, how could they all have the same stories? If this is just folklore, if this is just legend, or whatever the case, how could that be? You know what I mean? You know, so um, yeah, so that's where you got people got to put into perspective. But the thing is, it's the way society is today, and the people's cognitive dissonance. Uh, the way it is today is just like they can't comprehend such things because they don't see it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And they, they, mm-hmm. you know, all thought well, that's ridiculous. Sounds ridiculous, but you know what I mean? It's not going to be ridiculous when these things come back. Mm. Well, I'll tell you another thing real quick, and I'll, I'm going to do a show on my channel uh, pro- possibly here soon. The Indians would change. Okay, so we have 36 tribes of giants in the biblical narrative. And when you look yep. at that, the, the Indians, even way, we're talking about way past the flood up until modern times, even, you know, we're talking five or 600 years ago, they would still, they would name these beings that they would name that would come, it would come from wherever they are. So if they see a land, a mountain or a river or whatever, and they call it whatever, if it's whatever type of mountain it's called, they would relate and say, well, these are tall mountain. So these are tall people. And then they would use the name of the mountain and then they would associate it and, and literally incorporate that language or whatever, how they call the mountain and then incorporate with the, the so-called giant beings. It's crazy guys. I know it sounds crazy, but that is a thing that, that is, that's, there is some documentation on this mm. and it just blows my mind that we just disclude it. We just disregard, just disregard it. Don't worry about it. It's all been done away with. We, I'm getting to biblical now, but Jesus did what he did on Golgotha. Now we just completely just discredit. Just don't, don't even worry about any of it. It's just all, let's just, cut all that out that nothing nothing matters no more nothing matters yet it absolutely does matter thank i'm sorry i'm sorry it yeah, so does matter i think uh today there's 574 federally recognized native american tribes just in the united states alone just in the u.s uh 229 in alaska too that's just the united states and that there was mm-hmm. more back then too so you're looking at thousands thousands of tribes all having the same stories and that's just in america's here you know North America, mm-hmm. South America, Central America, and uh, even like the islands and all that. You know what I mean? Like uh, the Hawaii and the Hawaii stories, they got stories about giants. They all do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, uh, it's everywhere. Persia. It's everywhere, man. And they <laughs> said there's still out, some out in Persia, like uh, massive sized animals. 
Like that, mm-hmm. the animals are super, super huge. You know what I mean? In uh, Persia, and uh, you know parts of the uh, African countries, like uh, the Great Swamp area, which is I think they says like forty percent at least still unexplored yet in Africa, and they find in the anacondas over three hundred feet long. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's not even a joke. And uh, birds the size of pterodactyls, and yeah, this is um all. And again, you won't hear this in the United States. Mm. And this is just mm. regular news out in those areas. Mm. You know what I mean? And uh, Asians know this. A lot of them do. Uh, a lot of people in the Middle East know this stuff. It's common, common knowledge. You know what I mean? But mm. in uh, civilized countries, quote unquote, they don't teach this stuff and they hide it from people. You know what I mean? And again, mm. because it's like it's a Friday, because number one, it destroys the whole evolution narrative. That's what it does. That's why the newspapers stopped covering it in the mid 1900s, because it destroys the whole evolution doctrine. That's what it does. Mm. That's, uh, you know, like if something's come out of the water that's that big, an anaconda. Yeah. See what they've done. They've suppressed our minds so much that we can't process anybody bigger being bigger than seven foot. Yeah. Or any or anything else of that shape or form. We can't picture any kind of reptilian race or anything. But hey, there's all kinds of documentation on that. But yep. hey, you know, nobody. It seems like we just chuck it all out and say, well, as long as it doesn't affect me. <laughs> you know, and it will, you know, it'll someday these things will affect us in some shape or form. I mean, that's why me and Dan are trying to talk about it and expose it. But it just seems like to me that it just, you know, it's, is it, I don't know, like Dan said, cognitive dissonance. They, they're, it's either, well, Brian, there, there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we can. It, you know, if you can't do nothing physically, you can pray. That's, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be conniving here or mean. You can pray. You can pray. Mm-hmm. You can pray against these things and rebuke them in the blood of the Lamb of Jesus. We can pray about it. <laughs> it's not, I'm, we're not asking to go out there and <laughs> sharpen a blade and go on a big old and have a bunch of arrowheads and go on a big hunt for a giant creature. No, pray against it. You know, pray that these things don't manifest and pray that the gates, these gates will be suppressed by our Father. Yeah. Protect us, you know. But, uh, yeah, Dan, I, you know, I could go on a big ramp, man. I could keep going wherever you want to head. If you want to keep going, if you want to take calls, story, man. Yeah. We, yeah. Um, talk about uh, the Cocteau, Navajo, and the Comanches, Manta, the five tribes here in the southern regions uh, have stories about white giants where many of these tribes in the same area are talking about the same thing. There has got to be some truth to it involved in it. Well, common sense, yeah. If all these tribes talk about the same thing, you know what I mean? Again, there's got to be some truth about this, you know what I mean? And which, you know, and then why would they, who could come up with something like that? You know, and if you got all these tribes describing the same things, mm-hmm. ancient race of white giants who were vastly skilled in many areas. And the thing is, the fallen angels, they're the ones who taught uh, mankind different skills and all that stuff. And uh, mm-hmm. and that's when, you know, the sons obviously knew that, the, the you know, the giants. So, of course, they got to be skilled in those areas, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, it's, you can just do, listen, you know, it's categorized. You can type in star people on Wikipedia and literally, literally, if you go into the Navajo and all these different things, they talk about these creep, they talk about people, they're talking about a being that's superior in intellect and all these different knowledge. Right. And they says, it'll say, it'll say a variant of belief in the, an alien human hybrid. Yep. And it's like they talk about this even in 1976 in the Book of the Gods or Book of Aquarius, and you know they people are arguing about it or you know originating from extraterrestrials and all this stuff and the Earth through birth or walk into an existing human body. Literally, we're literally that's what it says and arrive arrived on Earth through birth or as a walk in to an existing human body. L- let me just tell you something that would be categorized as body snatching and demonic possession. But what what do I know? You know, Dan, what do I know? But I'm just saying it can get you the, there's all kinds of stuff here. We could look at, I mean, just on this, this on that topic of star people, but it, there's something to that mm. and I'm not discrediting. I'm not discrediting it. I'm saying there's a thing to it, but I don't want to take part of it. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to take part in, in their, in their uh, great celebration when these people, these so-called star people show up. But the thing is, it all correlates. It all corresponds with the, with the four one ones, all to do with everything to do with anything to do with paranormal. It's all related in some shape. It's a network of relating topics. It has to be because they're the gates, the portals, all this stuff. And that's uh, you know. Devil's Tower, by the way, guys. That's oh, in uh, yeah. Arizona, right? 
Yeah, that one's a, that one. You know, we can get into petrified trees, tree stumps. We can talk about the no, book of Enoch. Somebody asked, uh, "Why is it called the Devil's Tower?" Because the Indians uh, called the uh, uh, place of bad gods, and over the years it modified uh, during the modifications, whatever, went from bad gods to um, which tells me that there had to be some kind of uh, sacrifices that took place here. So um, they mm. called the Tower of Bad Gods. In which would be like demons or devils, you know, the Tower of the Devil. You know, I guess that over the years it became the Devil's Tower. So it was mm -hmm. known as uh, the Tower of Bad Gods by the Native Americans. Mm. You know, a lot of people have said that it, it's like a stump from a tree. Yeah. And, you know, it kind of looks like it by the formation of the rock, you know, it, but we can get it. That's a whole nother show in itself about <laughs> root systems and everything. We can, I mean, we can go down a rabbit hole in that one, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff with mud fossils and we can go on a big thing, man. That, that one's a, and it's always interesting, Dan, just think about it. Indians associate. There's always an Indian association with mountains. Yep. They always go to high mountains, military vantage points. I mean, come on they're, They, they say they go to this to get star, like literally knowledge from the star people, knowledge from their gods. I mean, come on. There's there's a correlation here. We're talking it, about you can get into Mount Hermon. I went to the this, fallen um, angels place here um, last some this past summer. Yeah, we went to a place called Indian Head in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. and I was in this hotel right here. Uh, stayed in this hotel, went up on that tower there, and I got actually got a picture of this this cliff here. They call Indian Head. Notice how it's a high area. Mm. I actually uh, stayed in that hotel and everything. And um, wow. when I, there's a little tower that that's actually on top of the building. Uh, wow. Darn pop ups. Yeah, and like so you go up this observation tower there, and they're right there on the cliff there. It's like um they call it Indian Head. So you know, the you know, we know the Indians used to bury their dead at the highest points too, and they did a lot of rituals up there, you know what I mean, and probably sacrifices mm. of whatever else, you know what I mean? So yeah, you like you said, they used a lot of high places and all that mountains and whatnot. Mm hmm It just yeah. You know, it's just, there's something about it. You know, it, like I said a minute ago, it goes back to, there's a lot of, it goes back to biblical all day long. Yep. Um, but um, there's just something about the high top, high mountain range, high elevation. You know, we could go on a big, you know, the, it could just get a lot of, there's a lot of subject matter. We go on a big topic matter. We can go, we could talk about different things like uh, the Tibet, India. I mean, we could talk about mm. the monks. I mean, we talk about all the stuff with Shambhala. Talk about high peaks. I mean, we go on some deep, deep, deep topics with just this, just with the mountain ranges in general. But um, yeah, man, like uh, it goes back to documentation of Bible, like Enoch yep. and everything. I mean, yep. it's just you know, and um, it just blows my mind. Blows my mind. I mean, why take that, some know, calls though? Well, yeah, yeah, I want to take some calls, but real quick, yep. it goes back to the beginning of what we're talking about today. There was giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, and then you talk about Mount Hermon. We didn't talk about Mount Hermon. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, and Mount Hermon, they declared a decree of the 200 at, at Mount Hermon. Okay, a high high elevation, high mountain point. Think about it. Is it is it is it too much to ask? Is these gate gate points? Is these gate entry points? And that's where it was a high, you know, like a high literally energy source for them to declare declare a two, you know, 200, you know, 200 of them declare a decree to come in here and start messing with the with the women. I'm not saying, I mean, I mean, come on, come on, Dan. It's crazy, man, right? I mean, they, they that, didn't pick a pond, did they? They didn't pick a pond. They pick a tight, they pick a high mountain. <laughs> yeah, and that's, uh, so it, the UN's got a base up there, too, the United Nations. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But Mount Hermon there, that's where, like um, Brian was saying, and uh, we, you know, if I would have read the rest of Enoch, I would have said that, that the 200 fallen angels uh, was more than that, but I think that they were the chief fallen angels. They ascended on Mount Hermon, and that's where they made the mutual bonds and implications to do this deed what is a you know dirty deeds what's a dirty deed having sex you know what i mean mm -hmm. so they made this deed and that's another thing i should have brought up too then that's another thing that just proves that the angels had sex with the woman uh they, they made implications on this mountain to do this you know what i mean this was where the oath was sworn to do this deed you know in plain and simple mm -hmm. to have children with the sons of uh, uh, the daughters of men i'm sorry you know what i mean so they yeah. and it's also where enoch was up there too you know, they were pleading to him to write a petition to God because they knew they messed up and they wanted forgiveness. But again, they knew better what they were doing. So, and uh, Enoch's up there for days writing this long petition and he ended up falling asleep. 
Imagine that you're around, surrounded by 200 fallen angels and they're all petrified because they know they're doomed. You know what I mean? Because Enoch, Enoch's telling them, Enoch told them what God's going to do to you. You know what I mean? And uh, they they were <laughs> they're like, oh, write a petition for us, please. And it's all in the book of Enoch. You know what I mean? And it talks about that about Mount Hermon. And uh, David Carrico brought up something too. We were reading something I forgot where it was, but there's a a passageway in the scripture that that goes under to Mount Hermon. So mm. sounds like a tunnel system, whatever. But it's pretty cool. Yeah. But yeah, why would a UN base be on Mount Hermon? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's gonna be some kind of a portal up there or something. Why would you? Why would you uh, blaspheme and go change the Ten Commandments yeah. on the mountain that would declare the Ten Commandments? 401 Rhode Island number. What's up? What's your name? Hey, uh, this is Wendy. Uh, my husband Kent called before. Oh, hey, Wendy. Um, <laughs> he's a, he was a guy from Minnesota, and uh, he said that uh, he told you that I was uh, a Rhode Islander, too. So. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, he was telling me that, uh, uh, well, I got to watch him on, on it later, but uh, he said that I was from Providence. I'm not from Providence. I'm originally from Warren. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, I had to give him crap for that, but <laughs> I'm in Cranston myself. <laughs> uh, you know, the first time I heard you, I'm like, you know, he sounds like he's got a Cranston accent. <laughs> <laughs> Cranston, yeah. So, Cranston. <laughs> no, nah, but I've been out of Rhode Island for a while, so I'm kind of losing oh, my lucky. accent. But that's all you're right. Lucky. <laughs> I, I still haven't gone over the wall yet, so I'm still in this. You prison. haven't, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got the state. Well, governor. you know, I was. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's oh, sorry. No, I was just saying we got the state governor and all that. They're they're just running us into the ground. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. My my family's still out there. At least I've got some family still out there. So. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, it's uh, they tell me it's a mess. So, but uh, I wanted to call in because uh, you know, what you guys are talking about on the show today, and mm -hmm. uh, just today I watched one of your uh, the I think it was the last giant episodes that you guys did. Um, I just watched that today, and you know, one of the things that Brian was talking about. Hey, Brian, how you doing? I'm I'm good, Wendy. How are you? I can barely hear you. <laughs> I said I'm good. I said um, I'm good, Wendy. How are you? I'm um, I'm good. I'm glad you're all right with that with that accent with the deer. So, <laughs> <laughs> bless you. Yeah, that was a phenomenon. I'm going to tell you that, but yeah, I'll bet, God I'll is bet good. it was like a deer the havoc moment. <laughs> About ready to jump and fly over it, but um, yeah, you know, no, no, you were that was talking a, about it was intervention, <laughs> intervention um, from God. I can tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you were talking about uh, just you know the stuff that they're putting out there in like movies and in you know like the comic books and the comic series and all that, and you know, it reminded me of the Disney stuff, right? Um, there's Moana and the whole uh, Tefiti, and if you look at, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the Disney movie Moana, um, but it's, it, Tefiti is the the false god, um, mm -hmm. basically one of the fallen angels, and she is like in the, she's basically the mountain. If you look at the top of the mountain, she's laying sleeping in in the shape of a sleeping person. Um, mm -hmm. and it, and in Maui is the, the demigod, her son, or I think not her son, but one of the other, one of the other ones. But anyways, it, it's like all throughout the whole entire movie. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like this supposed myth stuff is like, it, this is like real. Like this is really happened. Like these, the stories that they have, like these are based on true stories. And, uh, it's just fascinating to, to think about that. And, mm. you know, obviously I don't, I don't. I don't do Disney anymore, but <laughs> yeah. Um, but it is just like it's if you have eyes to see, you see it everywhere, and yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's just kind of all I wanted to share. So, well, I've oh, yeah. seen that movie. I've seen that movie before, and unfortunately, I've seen that movie, and I I picked up on that too. So praise God that you brought brought to the broadcast today because it's been a long time since I've seen it. But yeah, it's 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 inundated with all kinds of. There, it's just those little nitbits of subliminal messaging that puts it in our children. And they, you know what I mean? Mom and daddy, it must yeah. be okay, but it has a fallen angel and all kinds of Nephilim and Raphim uh, uh, narrative, you know, blending in with the, with sugar, sugar, sweet stuff. Right. It's, uh, yeah, exactly. it's pretty, it's detriment. It, it's, mm. it can be, 
there's a lot of words I can say, but it's pretty hard. It, it's just, it's definitely horrible for that to be, you know, in there. And then you let your, you know, innocent child, you know, partake in listening to that. You know, I've done it. I'm not, I'm not right. pointing fingers. I'm just saying yeah. in general, if you're not aware of these things, a lot of people just don't, what you said just then, if I was to speak of this in a public setting around here where I'm from, They'd be like, oh, what are you talking about? This has nothing to do with yeah. anything. It's just a cute little movie. What are you saying, Brian? Well, there's nothing There's nothing wrong. And you've probably heard that right. before, too. But they would literally oh, yeah. hang, persecute me, you know. But yeah. uh, that they would literally just say, you just need to loosen up and let and be have fun. And this is fun. No, mm -hmm. this goes back to a dark deity, you know. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you, Wendy, for the call. Great call. Yeah, appreciate you, Wendy. Well, well, we appreciate you guys, and we support you guys, and just want to thank you again for all you're doing, and um, just keep up the, the good work for for the Lord. And, um, yeah, and we'll hopefully get to visit and meet you guys someday soon. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. Well, take care, Wendy, and uh, God bless. You too. Yep. Bye. 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 No, they, I'll give a shout out to my uh, son. I don't know if he's still in the chat room here. It's, uh, yeah, he's still there. So yeah, um, he's uh, it's digital YT. So he's 11 years old. He's got a gaming channel. So <laughs> he wants people to subscribe to his channel. So and also Mary, <laughs> thank you also for the donation uh, from Mary. Yeah, bless you, Mary. So yeah. Um, Let's go to Wendy's. <laughs> no, yeah, Wendy's. yeah. Let's go to Wendy's. Oh, you like yeah. Wendy's uh, the food. Oh yeah, your son cracks me up. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. I'll bring you there tomorrow. <laughs> well, actually, tomorrow's Thanksgiving, so probably be Friday. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 funny. Yeah, that the <laughs> well, the restaurants are. I'm gonna make everybody hungry talking about food. I know. Yeah, yeah, but man. Yeah, so thanks, Wendy, for real. Thanks for a good yeah, call. There, you. it was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anybody else want to call in? I know it's like usually the first one to call and then the phone call stop flooding and afterwards. Yeah. So the number's up on the screen, guys. So uh, give us a ring. It's yeah, toll that, free. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> it's toll free. Yeah, it's toll free. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's even point having a toll free number no more. It's all the same now. You know, it's weird. I remember that when we were kid, you know, younger, we had those uh, phones on the wall there. You had to actually push, yeah, the, yeah. you know, dial things. And yeah, yeah, like you call out of state, it would be uh, more money than calling local. <laughs> yeah yeah so like um yeah we, the whole Ni indians all the tribes the thousands of tribes whatever they are they all have the same stories and then you get to the um we can even get to the the mayan stuff man if you ever read the yeah, stuff with the mayans and all that it's like yeah, same phew, thing man. goodness same thing um swamp light if you hear me uh native american indians sorry i yeah. didn't clarify that yeah if you can hear me repeat, Swamp Lot, I'm giving you a hard time. I haven't heard from you for a while. Native Americans. <laughs> yeah. Uncle Obvious, thank you for <laughs> throwing that out there. Yeah, thank you, Uncle. But, uh, yes, yeah, uh, that, yeah. Dirk Dink, uh, Dan, is your son tough like you? Yeah, he's getting there. <laughs> so he's getting there. So he wants people to subscribe to his channel. So, yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, I got my. I'm Native American on my mom's side, so I've heard all the stories, and yeah, it's the same stuff and stuff you will never hear in history school. You know, what I mean, the history class, whatever. And it's crazy stuff. My um, my tribe yeah. is actually the Thanksgiving tribe. They're the ones who started the whole thing with the Puritans and yeah. all that, the English and all that. So um, the Na you know the Wampanoag Indians. That's what my tribe is, which is like not too far from us. I mean, well, technically this is Wampanoag area too, but. Uh, we were the Thanksgiving tribe and all that stuff, and that's where the pilgrims came and all that stuff, you know what I mean? And <laughs> all the way down the road, so we're the ones who started the King Philip War and everything. And uh, King Philip, was, he, he, it was a Grand Sachem met a comet. That was, he was a Grand Chief because he had many sub chiefs and he had the Grand Chief. Uh, my relative was um, uh, King Philip. The, the English called him King Philip, but he was a uh, uh, Sachem met a comet. That's what his name was. My uncle's named after him. My Uncle Phil, but oh uh, man, it's like uh, a lot of stuff that you don't hear in the schools, and it talks about um, all kinds of that people in Europeans were here long before Columbus, uh, training with them and everything else, and this Absolutely. is was common knowledge with them, you know, and uh, then especially the giant stuff is phenomenal. I think it was um, the Hopi tribe, or I want to say uh, the no, um, the Anastasia, no, not Anastasia, 
But now the tribe the, that was describing how they these giants can literally run and pick up a buffalo as they're running. Um, it wasn't the Sioux Indians. It wasn't the Sioux yeah. Indians. I'm thinking um, it wasn't Sean. It might be Shawnee or Hopi. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think real quick. But um, yeah, but they yeah they pick up you know with a buffalo <laughs> you know how big a buffalo is they could pick yeah. one up and they're still running and tear a leg off and eat it. You know what like I mean? like it's they, football, like it's yeah. football running down the street. Yep. Yeah. What do you think it's going to do with uh? <sighs> well, yeah, I wouldn't. I was going to say a certain name of electric car. What do you think it's going to happen with them? He's picking up cars like Hot Wheels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a uh, it's an interesting topic. I mean, there's so much stuff. And oh, real quick, this is a Dan. No joke. I seen this today. No joke. I haven't listened to it. I only listened to about thirty seconds. Read yeah. the title. Thought it was crazy. Supposedly, don't hold me to this. Supposedly, there is like these blue like creatures. Go ahead and get that call. Nine two eight. You're on here. What's your name? Hello. Hey, uh, turn the volume down in the background, please. Yep, it's gone. Awesome. What's your name? How are you guys? It's Vince, uh, DGS MMA. Hey, what's up, brother? Hey, what's happening? Hey, yeah, I wanted to chime in. Um, so, you already know I was raised in a coven of witches. Yep. And this, this is going to relate to uh, what I learned about uh, on the Navajo Reservation, uh, known as the Yanel Gloshi. Now, that's loosely translated as skinwalkers. So three things in witchcraft that absolutely require uh, sacrifice, human sacrifice, child sacrifice, is invisibility, levitation, and shape-shifting. Now, back to the reservation. When I was a youngster, I left the on-site project at the mine that I grew up at, that my father owned a big rock pit and a gold mine, <laughs> and I started working for a business partner of his in the engineering field, who was a Navajo man. He's a Navajo legend. He was a uh, 20-time Navajo uh, national bull riding finalist, several-time champion, and a big-time contractor up there. <clears throat> so as the story goes, as he passed it on to me, and he's, he's since gone to be with the Lord, and he did love Jesus Christ. And um, as the story was passed on to me from him, the Yenel Gloshi the skinwalker, that um, coven, so to speak, in order to get into that coven as a, uh, as a mortal human being, you had to permit and you had to commit uh, sacrifice, blood sacrifice. And it had to be a blood relative. It couldn't be the stranger down the road or somebody random. It had to be somebody close to you. And the closer to you, the better. Um, and as we know in our studies, uh, like, for instance, Skinwalker Ranch, which has been uh, uh, glamorized, which there's nothing uh, um, beautiful and pretty about child sacrifice, which is at the heart of uh, Skinwalker Ranch and the Yenel Gloshi, that coven in its period. And I just wanted to uh, hit on the fact that I don't ever hear of any kind of investigations off of the the Navajo specifically, about mm -hmm. their missing persons. Uh, I've never heard anything tied into uh, the occult or the skinwalker, not on a, not on a, a gigantic scale. Um, we know that originally that was uh, Nephilim. That would be the, uh, the high priest of the uh, skinwalkers would be a Nephilim. And in order to be like him, you had to commit... Uh, blood sacrifice, which tied me into the thought of Nimrod becoming a Giborim or a mighty man before the Lord um, mm. and the amount of sacrifices he did. So it's just a little tie-in, and I figured I'd chime in. And, uh, yes, there's part of uh, some Navajo stories where they're talking about uh, um, Gian Dupe heads, which we would refer to as the uh, red hair Six finger, two row of teeth giants running straight up on elks and just, you know, ripping off a hind quarter and chewing on it while they're running. Um, mm. But anyhow, uh, just checking in, watching the show, having a great time. And I love you guys. Love you too, brother. Yeah. Blessings. Yeah. Thank you. 
Appreciate you calling Thank in. You. It's really, really informative yeah. stuff. Absolutely. The, I'll, I will chime in and tell you this. Um, uh, the missing 411 and stuff like that, uh, there's a lot of good research. There's a lot of people out there on the, you know, Right, the, right in the line of fire trying to go again, you know, trying to find out information, they're going to, they're going to, uh, divert, divert, divert. I mean, I've heard people even throwing up millions of dollars to try to get information and they deny them. They deny them. They will, it doesn't even matter. Even millions of dollars to get this information. And it, it's like locked down, black off stuff. You, you can't, it wouldn't even matter. Millions. And it's just like, wow. You know, so yeah, yeah. I just want to chime in and say that real quick. So I, I do know what you mean, and it doesn't matter how much money we throw at something like that in the name of our research or our father. They're going to try to put a stop to it 100 percent. And Skinwalker Ranch, the G and Dupeds, uh, the uh, Yenel Gloshi, that is a direct line to Genesis six. And if they did their research, and I'm sure they already did then they already know that the information that they turn up over there and the information they turn up on Black Mesa and Chichimato up on the Navajo Reservation will take mm-hmm. them straight to Genesis. Mm-hmm. Some crazy stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, awesome. Thank you for the call, brother. And uh, God bless you, man. I appreciate it. God bless you, you guys, too. Yep. Shalom. And, um, question in the chat room. Kathy Gorman. Does anybody know if the shape of X has something to do with Nimrod? Absolutely, it does. So um, if you've seen a lot of Egyptian hieroglyphics and all that, you'll see um, them with the arms crossed, right? And why do you think a lot of people are buried with the arms crossed for? And and it's a symbol with your allegiance to Osiris. That's why the Pope has a black cross. And, you know, it's, it's it's like a plus sign or an X. That's why he has them all over his robe and everything. I'd say it's their allegiance to Nimrod which is Osiris, you know what I mean? Or Gilgamesh, whatever you want to call him. But yeah, that's, uh, the Black X is very significant with the occult, big time. And that's why you see these things all over the Catholic Church. The Pope wears them. He's got that Roman cross as well, which is also the cross of Baal. Uh, yeah, so yeah, X is uh, significance. And I told my wife, if I ever die, just um, don't bury me like that. I don't, I don't want to be buried like that at all. Uh, because that's significance for um, Osiris, your know, allegiance to Osiris. That's why the Catholic Church buries their dead like that. You know what I mean? And they put the rosary, which is unbiblical, on there as well to keep your arms like that. So yeah, that's very much in uh, accordance with Osiris, you know what I mean? Which, uh, which is a Nimrod, you know what I mean? So, yeah, he's got many different names. Gilgamesh, um, Adonis, uh, many names for him. But another thing, too, where you guys were talking on the phone here, I, I found this here. It was Arukus, Arukus, I can't pronounce that right, Arukus Indians. And they were talking about, um, here is uh, from the Smithsonian Institution. They said the myth of the Arukus. Of course, they call it myth, of course, but there's many stories of them battling. Look at the, the pictures of them battling giants. Doing battles with giants. Many uh, stories. And that's not just them, too. It's like uh, almost every tribe. This one here, executing an Indian. You know what I mean? And uh, these are real things, guys. And uh, they had a big... And the Arukas tribe also had a big pot of this... Uh, you know, it's found in the United States of America in the, in the revolution and all that stuff. They play a big role in that, too. And also with the, um, the, the Freemasons and all that stuff, they end up with... It's a long story down the road from there, but... I'm not saying they're Freemasons, but they had a big part of the founding of this country. And you can see tons of the stories they have, and they drew them out and everything else, too, how they had big battles with these giants. Mm. So this is pretty interesting stuff, man. And um, the, and again, they got to dismiss it as legend and folklore, because if they were to say these are facts, you know what I mean, the, the so-called experts, then they would have to explain giants and, and it, again, it, it just destroys the whole evolution narrative, plain and simple. And mm. uh, you were saying something before uh, the call came in? I done lost my train of thought because yeah. that was such a good call. Like yeah. it just, you know, I just, my, it was such a good call. My brain instantly went to what I was referring to and speaking of. So I like, um, I can't remember where I was at, Dan. This one here is a stone giant. It's crazy, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, real quick, because I know she's in there. Uh, we need to pray for Crystal Gross. Oh, yeah. I know her, all that. That's been going on for a while. Um, We need to pray for her and all that. So keep her in your prayers. Big deal. It's a, a big deal. Do I do a mass prayer for her? 
Yeah, why not? Why not, Dan? So if you want to go for it, or you want okay. to do it? Okay. Well, why not, Dan? If you want to do it. Sure. If you want to. So Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus, we come to you and ask you to forgive our sins and trespasses that we've committed today. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, that you could pray. I mean, I'm sorry, you could help Crystal Gross's mom, Betty, uh, from, I think she's having open heart surgery or whatever. And I pray that you could help her health and help her recover and give her a great health, Lord. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah, keep praying for yeah. for all of that. It's no, a big deal. Sure, so I tell you this prayer here. So, Heavenly Father, we ask you to come for all of us in these uh, disturbing times and give us strength and courage and knowledge to discern the truth and, and just keep uh, nailing away at these people out there with these set theories, these uh, pre-tourism stuff, pre-tribulation rapture, and all these lies from, from the you know bowels of hell. We ask you to help us combat these things in the spiritual warfare. And help everybody here, Lord, and just help them uh, to learn more and ourselves as well. Help us to learn more and to grow closer to you. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Yeah, it's been a good show, Dan. Yeah. And uh, I appreciate uh, Mary earlier donating, and yeah. that was a blessing. And uh, I just thank everybody being here in the chat mm -hmm. and just yeah, and being able to come together. And guys, um, if you want to know, I have to say this all the time, uh, we're very transparent. So if you want to know where donations come from, a uh, go-to, I'm sorry. I rent uh, myself here. I rent a studio in the office building. So I got to pay rent. I got to pay different bills and all that stuff and the streaming for uh, Rumble and all that. So that's why we have a, um, a fundraiser here. And it's that uh, thing in the chat room that's pinned in there. That's why we have a fundraiser because it helps support this operation. And, it, you know, I mean, it helps... Uh, there's a thing in the chat room helps us support this operation. And if we need new equipment, like Brian, he's trying to get one of these microphones, a better microphone. And so he's saving up money for that too. And we have to, I mean, constantly upgrade the equipment and everything else that's going on. There's always something, you know, he's having computer issues. You know what I mean? Um, I just got blessed to get this computer last year, two years ago. I mean, so that's why we raise money here. If not, I wouldn't even raise it. You know, if I didn't have to pay rent or nothing like that, I would definitely wouldn't even have that. But this does go into the ministry here to provide these shows and the content and all that stuff. So, and I appreciate everybody who's been helping, you know, donating all that. And I understand people, you know, times are tough. I understand that. But the best thing you could do besides donating, you know, just pray for us. That's number one. Be found first. Just pray for us. And second best is like, share, and subscribe. You know what I mean? Get the information out. Pray for us and get the information out is more important than money. God's going to provide either way. So, um, but yeah, guys, um, thank you. Amen. You know, thank you all. And I'm not saying we're ending the show now, but I uh, just want to thank everybody and thank you, Valerie and Oclavius, for moderating the chat room. And my son, absolutely <laughs> digital. There, he likes to be called yeah, digital. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's yeah. funny. <laughs> and uh, Marky Mark, uh, God bless you too. And uh, yeah, I know we had disagreement, whatever. No ill will against your brother. I love you, man. And uh, anybody else out there that disagrees with us, you know, what I mean, you're more than welcome to disagree. And that uh, it. Sometimes the seed of God's gonna it gets you know what I mean it grows in people in certain times and different ways sometimes whatever the case but um you know no ill will um, against anybody that disagrees with us I strictly try to go by the Bible and there's been many times I've got corrected said Dan that's you're wrong looked it up yeah I was wrong and I came out and admitted it you know what I mean but mm -hmm. um this is what the scriptures say today we're going strictly by scripture this is not my opinion not my theory not nothing like that I went stri strictly by history and scripture you know what I mean and if you do that you can't go wrong you know what I mean and Amen. so, and Brian did the same thing today. We didn't voice none of our opinions. You know what I mean? These are real facts. You know what I mean? Historical and biblical and ancient too, which ancient history as well. So uh, either way, it's like uh, fascinating stuff. It really is. And um, Absolutely. We definitely look forward to doing another show. But uh, Friday, guys, we got a big one coming up. I can't wait for this. I've been amped up for this for a long time. It's been eating at me for a long time. And uh, I know this is starting to get very popular now. Uh, there's a theory going on that's saying that Jesus and Lucifer are the same person because they mistranslate uh, <laughs> in Isaiah saying that he's the morning star. But what they don't figure out is that there's several morning stars. And the book of Job talks about when all the morning stars, referring to more than one, all dance together. You know what I mean? In astronomy, we've got three morning stars. If you, so if you know astronomy in the Bible, you know there's at least three morning stars. You know what I mean? So what morning stars are they referring to? 
You know what I mean? Is it Venus? Could it be the uh, Sirius? Could it be uh, Mercury? Whatever the case. You know what I mean? We're going to get into that Friday, and we're going to completely smash the entire theory that Jesus and Lucifer are the same thing. And I can't believe it. I, I gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to shut. We're going to have Trey Harris on, Trey Boy. <laughs> uh, Trey Boy is going to be joining us uh, from Cross Correction Radio, and uh, we're going to just nail and destroy, eradicate this thing because this has like, really been eating at me for a while, and I've been meaning to do a show on this, and I've seen it everywhere now. You got Ranker.com and all these uh, Facebook posts been saying, you know, Satan, Lucifer are the same person. I'm mean, Lucifer and uh, Jesus, I mean. And uh, thank you for the donation by someone. Yeah, blessings. And uh, so, uh, you know, this has been really eating at me. And then again, if you, <laughs> when it describes Lucifer, right? And I'm not going to give it all this away, but when it describes Lucifer, you, all right, hit this complete night and day difference in Jesus, right? Number one, Lucifer and Jesus were two different eras, complete thousands of years apart, right? Two different bloodlines. How in the world will you even remotely get them? Because it says morning star. And Revelation talks about God's going to give us morning stars. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So you got to, uh, and it's again, stars with an S. There's more than one morning star. You know what I mean? So remember this. Remember this. Satan himself, right? What does he want to be like? He's jealous of who? Jesus, right? Everything in the occult, if you haven't noticed already, right? Everything in the occult and what they teach in the world today is complete opposite from what the Bible says. The Bible says the earth was created for us. So-called science says the universe was created for us, which is the other way around. You know what I mean? And you know what I mean? Everything's mirror image or a complete replica or a copycat of God. So, hmm. was Jesus, what does Satan do when he comes back? Right? Is he going to be uh, possessed into um, uh, possessing a man? The you know, the son of the beast. Yeah, he's going to be called what? The Antichrist. Which he's not going to be called. He's going to be. He's going to tell the world he's the, the Messiah. Right? A counterfeit. That's what Antichrist means. Is the counterfeit of something. An anti is a counterfeit or something or against whatever. But when he comes back, okay, and he takes his form in, in the world here and takes his throne as uh, the Messiah, right? He's um, he's going to claim all the stuff that Jesus did, right? He's a mimic, a copycat. So back then, Lucifer, right, which was a Nephilim, right? He was one of the kings of Babylon. He tried to send, remember the, tower, the point of building the Tower of Babylon was to do what? To send it to heaven. That's why they built the Tower of Babel. That's why God destroyed it. You know what I mean? And, uh, the, and the people don't put this together. It's like, and then again, I will play some videos of these people, man. And it's, these people are back crap crazy, man. It's like, how do you call yourself a Bible scholar or even claim to know the Bible if you think Lucifer and Jesus are the same thing? How? You know, it, it blows me away. And I, I didn't for a while didn't address it because I thought it was a joke. But apparently it's not because I'm seeing so many videos out there, so many posts. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you know Jesus and Lucifer are the same? You know what I mean? They act like it's a big secret. We revealed something that nobody knows. No, you revealed something that's completely stupid. You know what I mean? And uh, and I can't, stupidity isn't even the word for it. And that, this is why I'm going to address this uh, Friday. Me, Trey, and Brian here because we're going to rip this to shreds. And using the word of God, using all the scriptures and all that. I can't wait for this one. So, yeah. I'm really <laughs> looking forward to it, too. Super cool. It's good to have Trey Boy back on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know what it is because Catherine was in here uh, in the chat. It was uh, I was talking about Blue, then I got remember uh, a really oh, yeah. good call. Yep. Uh, real quick, uh, just for just to talk about it for a few minutes. Um, no joke. I heard this today. I haven't really looked into it too much. It's kind of fresh in my mind. Uh, apparently, I don't have anything link or anything right now, but I have to go back and do. I just listen to it listen to what the gentleman had to say for a few seconds and then i had some other things going on uh but they was referring to no joke so apparently they found these underwater so-called people <laughs> and they associate them that they look like blue tall like avatar characters and i would you know don't just <laughs> just keep it in the back of your head it's not i don't have anything i'm not 100 percent convinced there's anything there but i really do want to look more into it um they're uh so what i'll even go people? i'll yeah like ancient water people that are looking blue and tall i will refer to something um i think it's drake or draconian or Dracon dracos or draconian people and they're like an alien race like that supposedly then it's like a blue reptilian looking skin um long and elongated skinny 
I think they're called Dracos or Draconian. I can't remember now, but I have seen depictions and illustrations of these type of characters way before Avatar. Well, right, you know, before Avatar even came out as a movie. <laughs> but I thought it was ironic. They're they're literally reporting this crazy stuff, you know. Uh, I just thought it was wild. I just thought, you know, <laughs> what else now, you know? Hey, you know, that before you know it, before you know it, they'll be accepting these things as re- like, oh yeah, these. You want to go to the local diner? You know, there's like a big tall blue creature, you know, sitting back. Hey, I got some espresso for you. You know, I'm just being sarcastic, but as much as everything's going and how it's bending toward, it just seems, it just seems strange to me that this stuff is being reported on. So I just wanted to, that was what I was hmm. going to chime in earlier. I thought it was wild. <laughs> yeah, my brother sent me. Um, I sent it to you. I think. But it's a movie called Freeze. My brother Jason sent me to it. It's a trailer that's coming out this year, I believe. Uh, it says 2022. It's called Freeze. And it shows these oh, wow. um, scaly creatures, I guess, uh, in the movie, man. Mm. And let me see if I could. I, I'm going to have to get more information on it. I just watched it briefly. But, yeah, it's kind of weird. And, it's you know, if you notice all these movies coming out, let's um, right there mm. with them. I don't know if you can see it. It's all glittery, but. But yeah, we'll have to do a, sh- we'll have to do a caves show. And, uh, caves or whatever. It's like a yeah. scaly blue creatures, whatever. And yeah. um, the, I don't know. It's crazy, man. And uh, the Bible talks about too uh, the fallen angels being chained up under the Euphrates Ravers. Two of them chained up yeah. under the Euph- and the Euphrates Ravers right now. It's drying up. It's almost dried. You know what I mean? And uh, you see accounts of all the stuff, man. And uh, it, you know, it's just like it amazes me because the more you look into the giant stuff, it is everywhere. You can't escape it. You know what I mean? And even though they try their best to cover it up, and the thing is, God says all truth will be revealed. So they could try to cover it up all they want, and they'll sit down. And the thing is, when you talk about this stuff in front of these so-called "quote unquote" civilized people, they call themselves right, they'll sit there and chuckle at you and laugh and try to sound like they're above you. Because uh, you're quote unquote more educated and all this doctrines and all that, and they'll sit there and belittle you and laugh at you, right? And uh, the whole time, it's just like they're building up a false illusion. That's all they are. And they, they do that because what they're doing is they're covering up their fear. When they sit there and laugh at you, ridicule, mock you, and all that stuff, they're covering up their fear because they know they know deep inside that this stuff exist or possibly could exist and they and if they were to ponder on that or investigate that it would scare the heck out of them you know what i mean so that's why they sit there and laugh and mock you because it makes them feel better and it's a cover-up that's what it is it makes them feel better that's all it is you know what i mean so don't be despaired when when these uh goons sit there oh i'm a scholar or some whatever the case you know what i mean you've got some bible scholars out there who will sit there and mock at the idea of giants I'm like you're a scholar but you don't know the bible well they weren't really giants so you know the figuratively you know what i mean like no it's literal you know what i mean <laughs> and uh you know we could go down that road there but oh, man, yeah it's crazy yeah it, it is it's sickening so you got anything to add before we uh hop off here i think that's it Dan. yeah it's been a really cool show yeah. i mean we could like i said we could we could, if we if this was a uh, Friday show, we could stay on till four o'clock in the morning talking about this stuff, you know. Yeah. So. Well, guys, yeah. we got a, a PayPal, Venmo, and a Cash App, and the, the links are in the description to help support this operation. Or you could use that uh, Ko-Fi web link there in the chat room. It's up to you. And uh, also check out Brian, guys. Uh, his uh, shows and links to Visual Disturbance. He's got awesome shows on there. And uh, so also, nystv.org, guys, get a free 30-day uh, pass uh, for, uh, yeah, 30 days free and thousands of videos on demand. The promo code is Dan the Man, as you see there. And all the descriptions and link are in the links there. Links, I'm sorry, all the links and the descriptions are in uh, the description of the video. So just go in there and it has all the directions, whatever. But Dan the Man is a promo code. If you go to nystv.org, uh, you type in Dan the Man for the promo code, you get 30 days free completely. You know, so it's pretty cool. So there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. And uh, in those uh, who says after that, yeah. And uh, we, we didn't even mention the other stories, man. Like we, like I said, this is endless because we could have done a whole show on like um, Joshua and many other people, God's people, killing off Nephilim kings. And you know how many battles Israel had with Nephilim, the giants and the kings and all that? They, I mean, they went to battle the war so many times. They had to take up bombs. They had to destroy. And uh, here's another thing, too, because I know some people will take this out of context, right? And a lot of times when um, 
God instructed his people to go into the village, kill everything. From the animals to uh, don't take no, they instructed don't take no food, no water, don't touch nothing. Destroy everything and everyone, including the children. And people say, whoa, that's a harsh God. Well, you know, you, you know, but they don't understand that's called, Neph they were Nephilim cities. These were genetically corrupted people, you know, from head to toe. That's why everything had to be destroyed. And that's why God instructed them not to even drink or touch any food or water or drinks, but because... They didn't want them being affected. God didn't want them being affected with um, their. Well, yeah, I can't say on YouTube. Yeah, but you get the point. You know what I mean? And uh, we could go on all day with that stuff, man. And uh, Israelites built, uh, battled giants forever. So did the Indians. You know what I mean? We just, just talked about. You know what I mean? So it is a nonstop thing. And we're gonna do another giant show probably next month, whatever. And uh, you know, new giants in the news. We're gonna focus on that. Then we could do giants in the Bible. We could you know, go so many stories, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's unreal. And uh, David and Goliath, that's that alone. You know what I mean? Like uh, Goliath and his brothers were all giants. You know what I mean? And uh, it's just amazing, it really is. And uh, these were, like Brian was saying, and I think uh, Goliath was like that 13 feet tall, but he was like round, just like this beastly looking monster. You know what I mean? And uh, like all muscle, you know? And uh, <laughs> the enormous strength of these people, the 1,500 pounds, 2,000 pounds. Imagine that. Uh, <laughs> you're standing there, with the, this the creature that's 13 up to 36 feet tall or more. That's yeah, thousands of pounds. And they had shields that would that you couldn't even pick up. You know what I mean? That sword alone yeah. you couldn't even pick up. You know what I mean? But it's crazy, man. So eh, we could go on forever with this. But yeah, Brian, thank you so much, man. And, yeah, um, it's been a blessing. Absolutely. And once again, thank you, Valerie, and I. Um, I keep saying Irish Paul. Uh, yeah, he's been my moderator for years. God bless him. God keep him. Yeah. So thank you, Valerie and Uncle Obvious, for moderating the show and everything else. And so we'll see you guys Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern, and we'll put the link up uh, probably tonight or tomorrow. It'll be up on the channel. So make sure you hit subscribe and turn on the bell for the notifications, and you'll get hopefully you get the notifications. Sometimes uh, YouTube doesn't do that. Even people who are subscribed and have the notifications bell turn on, they don't get the notifications. But check that or uh, tr uh, truthradioshow.com. We always have the link, the direct link up there, and we post it on the social media. And if you go to that website, truthradioshow.com, has the links to all our social media and everything else. So love you all. God bless. Shalom. And you are the resistance. We'll see you Friday.